Yo, it's your boy Orion, Northwest Sports Fanatics, back at you with a new video. Today is Thursday, March 28th, 2024, with your boy Ryan and the Northwest Sports Fanatics. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, smash that like button either now or on your way out. Donate to your boy if you can, cash app, dollar sign, O-R-I-O-N-N-W-S-F, or the YouTube Super Chat right here. We're opening day 2024 of the MLB regular season, the Boston Red Sox versus the Seattle Mariners. First pitch is going to be here in about five minutes, and let me go into the starting lineups. Oh, baby, and then I had to hit you with the thumb, baby. Rafael Devas on the left, and Julio Rodriguez on the right. The new look and the new style for the NWSF in 2024. I hope you guys like the new look with the thumbs, and uh, I'm ready. I've been waiting for this moment for many, many, many months, and we're finally here. Let's go over the starting lineups here real quickly before we tap in to first pitch in about five minutes. Starting off with the visiting Boston Red Sox. Leading off for the Red Sox, left fielder, Jaron Duran. Batting second, third baseman, Rafael Devers. Batting third, playing shortstop for the Red Sox, Trevor Story. Batting cleanup and batting fourth, first baseman, Tristan Cassis. Batting fifth, playing right field tonight, Tyler O'Neill. Batting sixth and DHing for the Red Sox tonight, Masataka Yoshida. Batting seventh, playing center field for Boston, Sedan Rafaela. Batting eighth, playing second base, Emmanuel Valdez. And batting ninth, playing catcher for the Red Sox, Connor Wong. And on the mound for Boston, Brian Bello. Oh, baby, here we go. Let's get it, baby. And for the Seattle Mariners, leading off, playing shortstop for the Mariners, Trident's up. J.P. Crawford. Batting second, playing center field, Julio Rodriguez. Batting third, playing second base, welcome to the Mariners, Trident's up, for A. Polanco. Batting fourth and playing cleanup, coming from the world champ, Texas Rangers, DHing for Seattle, Mitch Garver. Batting fifth, playing catcher, big dumper, Cal Raleigh. Batting sixth, playing right field, welcome back to Seattle, Mitch Henniger. Batting seventh, playing left field, Dominic Canzone. Batting eighth, playing first base for the Mariners, Ty France. And batting ninth, playing third base for Eugenio Suarez. You are the everyday guy for now. Trident's up, Josh Rojas. And on the mound for the Mariners, Luis Castillo. Let's go, baby. Oh, baby. You already know what it is. Let's go, baby. And make sure you guys are taking care of your mental health. Check out the boxes every single day to win the day. And we are here, 2024 opening day, Boston Red Sox, Seattle Mariners. Let's fucking go. Let's get electric tonight, and let's start off hot early and often. Oh, baby. Sarah in the building. What's good? Let's go. I saw that uh, Goldschmidt went three for four, and everyone else went like 0 for 27. Might be a long year for the Cardinals with that pitching staff and as well as the players, but I'm hoping that it'll turn it around for you sooner than later. Let's get to 100 in donos. Let's do it. Smash the like button. Let's get it done. Judah in the building, representing his Red Sox, staying up late tonight. Daniel in the building. What's good? Keep me updated on March Madness, even though we have an uh, opening night here for the Mariners. So let me know what we got going on there. I appreciate that. 
UConn dominated 80. Woo! Yeah, you figured they would. You figured they would. Let's go. Let's go. Yep, yep. Yankees beat the Strohs. You know I love that too. Yeah, and, I, and the thing is, it's, you know, you're going against the Dodgers. So it's like, you know, Sarah probably had the hardest matchup, you know, starting it off, you know, uh, out of any team to play. No one wants to play the Dodgers or the Braves, uh, you know, or one of the top tier teams right out of the gates. But Dodgers would probably be the number one team that you wouldn't want to face, even if you were the Atlanta Braves or the Diamondbacks or if you were the Astros or the Rangers. You know, you, you typically would want to play them later in the season. So Goldschmidt, you're starting it off like an MVP going three for four. But where was everybody else? Hopefully they show up in game number two for you. All right, let's go. I am so excited right now. Keep me updated on March Madness, please. And I am ready to go. I watched the Orioles game uh, against the uh, Los Angeles Angels, and I saw Mike Trout ended up hitting the first homer of 2024. But in just pure Angel fashion, what happened? They got fucked up after that home run. And the Orioles are the real deal. I'm telling y'all, you know, the Orioles might end up getting to the World Series this year, ALDS, ALCS. Now, I really feel, you know, the Orioles and the Mariners are going to be the two sleeper teams in the American League. And I guess not so much of a sleeper team since they made the World Series and lost with the Arizona Diamondbacks. But Diamondbacks and Phillies need to get a little bit more attention. A lot of the attention will go towards the Dodgers and Braves, deservedly so. But as we've seen, just because you win 100 to 115 games in the regular season, you got to get it done in the playoffs. And in the last few years, it's been the Phillies and the Diamondbacks, not the Dodgers or the Braves. Let's go. Let's go. All right, come on, Castillo. All right, here we go. First pitch. Pitch is outside. 1-0 count. 295 last season. Batting average for Jaron Duran, eight homers and 40 ribbies. Castillo, pop foul. 1-1 one, one count. Four seam fastball on that first pitch. 95 miles an hour. That second one was a sinker. 96 miles an hour. 1-1 one, one pitch. Pitch is low and inside into the dirt. 2-1 count. Jaron Duran career versus Luis Castillo. One for three with a homer. Last season, 102 games, 295 average, 346 OBP, slugging of 482, and an OPS of 828. 2 1 pitch popped up. Dominic Canzone. Out number one, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Hope everyone is having a fantastic day. Thank you to Lauren and uh, and Sarah helping out on the Twitter slash X. So if you do have a Twitter slash X account, please uh, like and retweet the stream. It'll help us out. Shout out to all the people watching on Twitter slash X right now as well. Pitches outside, 1-0 count. Jaron Duran popped out. Next up, Rafael Devez, arguably their best player. Pitch is outside, but right on the strike zone, supposedly. Strike looking, 1-1 one, one count. We'll make sure we get the proper little Red Sox logo. Fouled off for Devas. 1-2 count. Pitch is high, 2-2 two, two count. Uh, I watched him last year, and he seemed like he had a really cool personality. I actually saw a couple of interviews that he had, uh, you know, with like MLB Network or, you know, the broadcast. Um, I did not know that about him, but that's very cool. You know, anyone that can be able to touch on mental health. 2-2 two, two pitch and blew it past him. There we go. First K of the season, Luis Castillo. That's very cool. That's awesome. He's your favorite player. Nice to know. We'll be able to throw up plenty of photos for you. There we go, baby. 97 miles an hour by Luis Castillo. We'll take it. Nice job. Next up for the Red Sox, Trevor Story. 
One out count, took a ball. Top of the first, 0 0, opening day 2024. 1 0 pitch from Castillo, right down the middle, fouled off. 1 1 count. 2 0 3 last season, average three homers, 14 ribbies for Trevor Story. Took me a minute to get everything kind of prepped, you know, but I feel that everything looks the way that I want. It's right on the corner for a strike. A lot of these pitches are very 50 50, right on the zone. You know, where they definitely could be called ball, but looks like the ump is uh, giving us a little bit outside of that strike zone, at least so far tonight. And hopefully they do that uh, on the opposite side as well for Bellow. The, the one thing I hate seeing is when a game is one-sided, when an ump calls it one-sided. Pitch is high and outside, 2-2 two -two count. Two two pitch from Louise. Chop towards third foul. Two two count. And I love this time of year. Fantastic. And I'm always going to make sure it's a 50 50 broadcast no matter what. We're not going to be hating on the other team like a lot of other broadcasts that you see on the MLB. You know, we're going to make sure we're calling greatness of wherever it's at. There we go. Another K by Castillo. Pumping that gas. Premium fuel. Let's go. Electric start for the M's. Let's go. Nice job, Castillo. I see you. Let's go. Let's go to the bottom of the first. Leading off for the Mariners, shortstop J.P. Crawford. Batting second, center fielder Julio Rodriguez. And batting third, second baseman, new to the team, try to end up Jorge Polanco. Oh. Let's go, baby. I'm super excited. But the thumbnails, you know, I, I thought, you know, we should give it a little bit of a, a lift, you know, and do something different. And I obviously started doing that, you know, with the free agency frenzy football stream. Then we carried that over, uh, you know, to the NHL streams where, you know, I tried to make maybe the logos look a little bit bigger, try to make it look a little bit different from last year. And I really like the way that the thumbs are looking. And these will be how they look primarily for 2024 and beyond. You know, unless they, you know, unless I decide to switch them up again, but I figure instead of going with these smaller logos kind of in the middle and the players on the outside, you know, why not have something flashy and big with the logos behind, you know, like full screen on each side and then have the player image in front of it. I just think it looks a little bit cleaner. It pops a little bit more. And, um, you know, I hope you guys enjoy it. I took a lot of passion and a lot of time and energy. And, you know, I don't take any time watching any other YouTube channels. I don't copy anybody else. I just try to bring a little piece of my originality and a little bit of my creativity to the channel. And I uh, hope you guys love it. I think it turned out pretty fucking good if you ask me. Let's go, JP. Lauren's getting his first bag of seeds opened up. Let's go. Brian Bale. Want to make sure we giving him the proper love there. On the mound. The Red Sox ace. JP in the box. 2-0 count. I like that. JP's got a great eye. But we already know with JP Crawford, you know, he's not going to swing at just anything. 2-0 pitch. Pitches inside, 3-0 count. Ooh, baby. You know, when you get JP on, Julio might be, you know, a little bit more patient in the box. But in this situation, you know, we might be a little bit more aggressive, uh, you know, in early counts in past, you know, uh, previous seasons, just depending on the player. 3-0 count. Takes a strike inside. 3-1 count to JP Crawford. Let's go, JP. One of my favorite players on the team, hands down. You know, if I had to have a top five, it would probably be Julio, JP Crawford, Cal Raleigh, George Kirby and probably Bryce Miller. But once I see Polanco and takes a ball outside, let's go. And I see Garb and a few others. I imagine there's going to be a few others that are going to get higher on the, uh, whoa, they call that, they call that a strike. No way in hell. 
No, 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 no. That was a that was ball four. And then Julio. No, no, no. On deck. Wow. That was cheap. That was that was by far a walk. And they called that a strike. I can't believe that happened. And then he grounds out to first. Ooh. That wasn't even close to being a strike. Unbelievable. Way to take the momentum out of our hands right out of the gate. Now, I need to see a replay of that last pitch. If they can show it on the... Uh, they're just showing the pitch arsenal of what he's good at. Sinker, change up, four seam, and then his backups are slider and cutter. But that one was out of the zone. But it is what it is. All right, next up, Julio Rodriguez takes a strike down the middle looking. Let's go, J-Rod, my boy. Let's go. Two seventy-five average, thirty-two homers, hundred three ribbies. Big swing and a miss. O two count. Let's go. Come on, J Rod, you the man. You're a top ten player in this league, and you have aspirations of being top five. Pitches outside, one two count, and then eventually, you know, top three. But I would imagine, you know, you have goals if you're a superstar like Julio at some point or another, if you can be recognized in his prime in years four through seven or eight or a little bit beyond that. At some point, you know, Julio may end up being the best player in baseball. I don't think anyone would really say that it's impossible for him. He's, you know, the most likely guy, you know, on the Mariners since Ichiro or Griffey that's had this type of skill set. So I know Otani's great and Aaron Judge is great, you know, but as they, those guys get a little bit older, Acuna, and then, you know, you have other guys that will step up, you know, Julio just needs to step up and, oh yeah, there we go. Go for two, go for two. Let's go, try it ends up, baby. Yes, sir. That's how you start off the season, Julio. Yeah, baby. And I was actually looking at the uh, lineup from opening day last year to this year, and last year's was a joke. No wonder we didn't make the playoffs and we had such a shitty roster. So this one looks like uh, we're going to be much, much better. Julio, stand-up double. Let's go. Let's go. Next up, second baseman, Jorge Polanco. Let's go. Yes, sir. Big swing and a miss. Oh, one count. Elliot in the building. What's good? Yeah, J Rod could uh, end up being 40 40, you know, 40 stolen bags, 40 homers. And at some point, 50 50. I don't think that would be that crazy to think. Not this season, more than likely, but you never know. Polanco popped up. Nice. Yeah, we got runners on the corners, baby. I knew Polanco was going to be great for us, and this was probably the most underrated signing besides Mitch Garver. And for them to hit back to back to each other, you know, if we want to end up making the playoffs, and instead of winning, you know, eighty to eighty-eight games, and we want to hit ninety to ninety-five or a hundred to one hundred five, it's going to come from the new guys, Polanco and Garv, right? And then also bringing back someone that was on the team for many years, Hanniger, and then Canzone and Rojas. A lot of these guys are going to have to step up. Not just J.P. Crawford and Julio and Cal Raleigh. We expect them to be good and tie France. It's going to be about the other significant role players. And I feel that a lot of these guys are going to become fan favorites, especially Polanco and Garver. Let's go. Next up, DHing for the Mariners. We don't have to worry about Mike Ford or finding a DH after 60 games. Mitch Garver. A lot better than La Stella and, and Wong and a lot of those shitty-ass players that we tried to put in there. I feel good, and Garver should be our DH the whole year. And you know how good it feels to start in game number one, not game 60, to finally know who your everyday DH is going to be? That's going to help us win at least 10 extra games in the first, you know, probably 60 to 100, just with that simple fact of having that position in place. Pitches inside, 1-1 one, one count. Let's go, Garve. Hey, yeah, I saw that. Nice win for you, bro. One, one count. In the bottom of the first, runners on the corners. Let's get a run, baby. Let's get our first RBI. Pitches outside, two, one count. And one thing that I noticed in spring training with the Mariners, I feel that we're going to be a little bit more aggressive, you know, uh, on first pitch strikes, you know, but also I feel that we're going to be a little bit more patient in the box as a team. 
So you're going to see timed and calculated aggressiveness in the first two pitches in the count. And then you're also going to see the hitters work the count better than last year. Go, go. Fuck. Double play. Great defense there by the Red Sox to prevent us from scoring a run. Tough, tough, tough. Garve, garve, garve. That's not very Texas Ranger-like. That's not championship-like. Good defense there by Boston. Much, much love there. All right, let's go here. Man, oh, man. Feels good. Feels so good to be back. You know, besides the Ducks, you know, this is, like, probably my favorite thing. You know, NFL is on a whole other category, as we know. That's going to be most people's number one. But not only do I love the Bucks and all the NFL teams and being able to cover the league as a whole with no bias – you know, I love, love, love college football, and I love, love, love MLB. And I feel like uh, NHL and basketball, they're, you know, obviously a little bit lower in the pecking order, you know, kind of filler stream type of stuff. But, you know, I've been a fan for a long, long time. And uh, anytime, you know, you've been a fan of something for, you know, 30, 35 plus years, um, you know, what can you say? You know, the excitement is real. Let's go. All right, let's see who's up next here for the Red Sox. In the top of the second, we're knotted up at zero. Nice little logo there with the uh, swinging bata there. I like that. All right, let's see who's up. All right, here we go. Batting first in the top of the second inning. Clean up, hit a first baseman, Tristan. Yes, yes. Like that photo. Very crispy. Batting second this inning. Fifth in the rotation. Right fielder, Tyler O'Neill. And another sleeper player for the Red Sox, the Asian persuasion, the Asian sensation, DHing from Boston, Masataka Yoshida. He was badass last year. He was hitting over 300 almost the whole season. Uh, I like keeping my eye on, you know, up and coming players. And obviously, uh, you know, if you're going to be an Asian born player, it doesn't matter what team you're on. You know, I'm going to I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to pay attention to the Red Sox, the Cubs, the Padres and a lot of the other teams that, you know, either have a Korean born player, Japanese born player or an Asian American player. Not only just the Asian American players, but again, it's just nice to be able to see a little bit more representation in baseball. You know, you're going to get elite, you know, brothers. You're going to get the elite Dominicans. You know, you're going to get the elite Caucasian players and the Canadians. But it's just cool to be able to see baseball being so well rounded. But uh, I did see uh, an article saying that the uh, African American baseball players that are everyday players is a lot lower than it was in years past. Um, you know, and, and that might be true, but again, uh, you know what I mean? Like if you're looking at the talent worldwide, it's a global sport, you know, and obviously the brothers are going to be dominating on the NBA side and, you know, you're not going to hear a whole lot of complaining from, you know, uh, other races there because we know that they're the best athletes in that particular sport and they got the height, you know, and they got the strength, right? And the agility, but for baseball, you know, you don't got to be 6'10". You don't got to be able to, you know, be 250. You know, you can still end up being 5'10", you know, 175 and, and make the majors. So it definitely is a little bit more of an even, you know, playing field uh, as far as, you know, blacks, whites, Asians, Mexicans, or Dominicans, or if you're from Venezuela, you know, and it's nice to be able to see the league is going deeper and deeper with trying to find the elite talent across the globe. Little dribbler. There we go. Ty France, one away. Next up for the Red Sox, right fielder, Tyler O'Neill. Top of the second, Castillo. Ball one with a four-seam fastball, 1-0 count. Tyler O'Neill, 231 average against Luis Castillo, 219, seven for 32, two homers in his career. Pitches outside, 2-0 count. Let's go, Luis. Let's go, baby. Three O count. Takes a strike looking. Three one count. 
And then uh, as far as the background music, you know, I know some people, you know, like it for the whole stream. And then usually I'll just do it, you know, in between innings during the commercial break. Uh, but I'll let people kind of decide throughout the broadcast if they would like to have that music in the background, um, you know, or if they just want to have it, you know, when I end up going through uh, in between innings and whatnot. So for some people, you know, they like it throughout the whole stream. For some people, they don't mind it, you know, here and there. But, you know, I, to me, I don't really care if it's on the whole time or not. So, but I'll let you guys decide. You want the music on in the background during the whole stream? Because it's not going to take away from anything that I'm doing on my end. So, all right, Masataka Yoshida. 289 average, 15 homers, 72 ribbies, played in 140 games. Top of the second, 0 0, baby. Pitch right down the middle, 1 1 count. Pitch right down the middle, the middle to Yoshida takes a strike looking one two count. I like being able to do the photos too because you know it gives you a, a name and a face, you know, unless you're you know watching the broadcast itself. But again, you know, batters are so far away unless you're doing like a close up of the players. So two two count. Come on, baby. Pitch is outside. 3-2 count. Stolen bag. By O'Neal. Matt in the building. What's good? And hopefully we can end up getting some of the goats to come through. I mean, it is opening day. Popped up, the can zone. There we go, two away. Shout out to all the people watching on Twitter slash X as well as on YouTube. Love you guys, appreciate you guys very, very much. Let's go. Sedan Rafaela in the box, chop foul. Twenty-three years old, very young. Two forty-one average, two homers, five ribbies last season in twenty-eight games and brief appearances. Let's see what Sedan can do. Chop towards third again. Pitch on the outside, one, two count. Seems like he's got some potential. One, two pitch. Pitch is outside, two, two count. Go, baby. Got him. Let's go. Third punch out for Luis Castillo, my boy. There we go. Go to the bottom of the second inning. We're knotted up at zero. See who's up next here for the M's. All right, leading off in the bottom of the second, catcher, big dumper, Cal Raleigh. Batting second, playing right field, Mitch Hanniger. Try to answer up, baby. And batting third, an everyday player in left field, Dominic Canzone. Let's 
go. And I tried to sprinkle in some uh, new photos in there as well. I got a lot of ones to be able to kind of cycle through. But I wanted to make sure that obviously, you know, the Polanco, the Garb, that's going to be new. Uh, you know, I wanted to spice it up a little bit with Dom and Ty France. And uh, obviously, you know, going through the different Julio photos as well. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Our guy, got to be good this year. That one's too blurry for my liking. That one, that one gets deleted. Deleted, delete, delete, delete. All right, let's go, Cal. One of my favorite players on the team. You know, a guy that is the most underrated catcher. He's a top 10 catcher in the league, but he doesn't get the respect. And he's the best power hitter as a catcher, uh, I feel, that's in the you know majors right now. Run, Cal. Yeah. Ran it out to first. That's my boy. Big dumper to little dumper. He lost a little bit of weight, and maybe he doesn't get the first last year, but this year, there he is. Nelson Cruz in the booth. What up, Nelson? Nice job, Cal. Next up, right fielder, Mitch Hanaga. Welcome back, bud. Trident's up. Jacob in the building. What's good? Yeah, I do, uh, you know, 100 to probably 130 out of like the 152 games. I mean, I'm going to try to do every single game that I can. I mean, I stream pretty much every day. So uh, I'll be doing quite a few. So when the Guardians end up playing the Mariners, you come through and we'll hang out. We'll watch the game together. Bottom of the second. Bello. 1-0 pitch. Kind of chopped him, damn it. At least it wasn't a double play. Haniger, an underwhelming at bat. Let's go. Next up, left fielder, Dominic Canzone. Let's go, Dom. Everyday player in left field. You don't got to worry about Jared Kalanick anymore. You're the guy. Let's go. And then even though it hurt getting rid of Paul Seawald, we ended up getting two everyday starters out of the deal. But, you know, with Josh Rojas in the nine hole at third base, you know, we have uh, Luis Arias and whatnot, but we're still going to need someone better at third. You know, this guy's the probably the worst guy in the starting lineup, but every once in a while, he'll surprise you. Let's go, Dom. Next series. All right, sounds good, bro. Yeah, one day contract to, to sign as a, a Mariner in the pre-show, they did that. They had Ichiro there. I mean, they have a lot of the legends that are there, but it's opening day. So, of course, you know, it is a lot of the Hall of Famers are going to be there. Sometimes, you know, Griffey and Randy Johnson are busy because they're professional photographers. But sometimes you're not going to be able to see Randy and Griffey there all the time. But Griffey makes a little bit more of an effort than Randy. And plus, Randy played, you know, many places. He played on the Expos as a rookie. Then we got him on the Mariners. Then you guys remember he was on the Diamondbacks and the Yankees. So I don't really know Randy Johnson's affiliation really isn't with Seattle like it is with like Ichiro and Edgar Martinez and Griffey you know some of these other guys it's more like Seattle is home for Randy it was just kind of a, a stop in his you know fantastic career I love him you know he's probably my second favorite you know uh, as far as like legend player from back in the day I'm a big big Griffey guy love Randy Johnson the big unit fantastic player one of the best you know lefties of all time just with like Koufax and Steve Carlton on the Phillies right Big swing and a miss, 3-1 count. Um, and then obviously you already know I love Edgar, I love Ichiro, and then now we got Julio, so. Pretty nice starting five. Griffey, Randy Johnson, Edgar Martinez, Ichiro, Julio, my goodness. And I get it, you know, we don't got any World Series victories or appearances, but we will, you know. Big swing and a miss, struck him out. Nice pitch by Bello.
Next up, first baseman, Ty France. And it takes a lot more effort when I do the prep, when I have to do all the photos and I have to make sure I'm getting like the HD 4K stuff. But I like doing it, you know, for the opposing teams because it gives me an opportunity to be able to match a name to a face on all the rosters in Major League Baseball, all 30. And that way I can be comfortable with pronunciation and obviously position. And uh, the more that you're willing to put in that work, you know, the more well-versed you are going to be in this game that we call Major League Baseball. Pitch low on the corners. 1-1 one, one count. Let's go, Ty. Probably the lowest Ty uh, has been in the batting order, but I actually like it that he's batting eight. You know, so you got him, Rojas, and then JP and Julio. So if he can get on base, you know, someone might be able to knock him in, you know, at whatever point we are in the lineup, either starting off with the eight hole, and then it goes eight, nine, one. Or if we start on the seven hole, seven, eight, nine, somebody gets on base like Ty, then maybe JP can knock him in. So uh, I know Ty probably is a little frustrated, you know, that he's gone from an all-star uh, off year last year. And now he's an eight hole hitter, but I honestly think if he can accept that role, it's really going to pay dividends for us. And plus, you got to be able to earn it, right? If you want to be able to get higher in the order, you got to be able to get hits and play better. He lost some weight in the offseason as well. So I feel like the Mariners are, are very, very dedicated. And uh, this team is like night and day different than, uh, in 2023. Yeah, I got links if you guys want to watch the game uh, at the same pace that I'm on with what I'm watching if you need it, unless you're already watching it already. But I can always provide the link that I'm watching it on. So if you guys want to watch it on same time, let me know. Let's go. Two two pitch from Bello. Pitches outside. Three two count. Megan in the building. What's good? Let's go cracking. Let's go Mariners. Oh MLB TV, nice. And I assume they probably have like a free preview. You know, for like the first week. I wonder if I uh, go through some of the apps on my TV, if, uh, if it's on there also. I appreciate that. How, how was the mentals today? Oh, big swing and a miss. Got him. Big strike out there for Bello. But hopefully things are, are going decent today. And uh, it's always a pleasure when you can come in and say hi. Or hang out with us depending on your schedule. So I hope you're having a good day. And, uh, you know, every day that you're, you come in and hang out, you know, it makes me feel good. You know, because, again, you know, when we go through the ups and downs, it's just nice to be able to be surrounded around people that actually care about you. And that we can interact and uh, have a good time. You know, we have a very good bond and a very good uh, camaraderie on this channel. Big facts. All right, Red Sox, I see you. All right, let's go to the top of the third inning. We're still knotted up at zero. Leading off for the Red Sox in the top of the third. Second baseman, Emmanuel Valdez. Batting second, catcher, Colton. No, 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 Connor Wong. And 0 for 1, batting third this inning, left fielder, Jaron Duran. Let's go. Take care of your mental health, y'all. Win the day, baby. Jordan in the building, how are you? Hey, big win for the Reds today. 
man, you got to be fucking ecstatic, you know? And you know what's crazy? You know, I was watching like MLB Network and, uh, you know, I was going through some of the quote unquote experts and whatnot. There's a few people that think that the Reds, you know, might compete for the division or will win it, you know? And I knew that they were getting better, you know, every single at bat, every single game, you could tell. And obviously getting LA De La Cruz gave you guys that support, right? But to be able to see you guys play the way that you did, I was thinking about you when I uh, was watching a little bit and I was watching the Orioles you know, beat up the Angels for the first game and saw Trout hit that homer, but I knew that eventually that they were going to collapse and the Orioles were going to show how good they really are. They are a World Series contender, believe that, and uh, they proved it. They showed it. Big facts. Man, you guys were cooking is an understatement. You guys were kicking ass and taking names, baby. It was awesome. But with thumbnails, you know, I got it big, big, big logos, big images, all the photos of each team starting. So you know, a lot of effort goes involved when I end up doing baseball streams. You know, I, it's probably the most effort that you have to put in, you know, as far as like the photos and changing things up as the game goes along. Uh, but I enjoy it, you know, it takes a lot of effort. But again, if you put in the work, you know, you will get the results. So O2 count on Emmanuel Valdez. Pitches outside, one, two count. Four seam fastball, 95 miles an hour outside of the zone. And plus also, you know, when you end up doing a baseball stream, you know, there's so many button clicks compared to other streams. Oh, nice infield single there by Valdez, right in between the gap. All right, baby. Yes, yeah, they've had a lot. I mean, Mariners commercials have been goaded for like 25 years. Like every year they've been putting them out for like the last 20 and they're always good. There's never a bad commercial. And a lot of them end up being really funny and comical. And yeah, it's great. And you can tell they have a really, really strong bond, Julio and Ichiro. Same thing with Griffey. It's like pretty much all the legends, except for like Randy Johnson, because he's a professional photographer and he wasn't really like a long time Mariner. He was just here for a little bit of his career. But, you know, Edgar is always in the building or, you know, kind of around the scene in, you know, the Pacific Northwest. Griffey is a professional photographer now, but still he'll make appearances here and there. And uh, Ichiro, you know, you'll see him probably the most out of anybody, which is awesome because, you know, you love him. I love him. And every Mariner fan uh, adores him. First ballot Hall of Fame. And if Ichiro doesn't go unanimous, Griffey should have. But there was like a New York hater that decided to have that one vote against him, which is ridiculous. I better not see that when Ichiro makes the Hall of Fame. That better be unanimous because Griffey should have been unanimous. But you had that Yankee journalist that was an asshole that decided to not put him in, which is dumb. You know, but Ichiro should be unanimous. First ballot Hall of Fame. I mean, you know, a, a classic guy, uh, you know, well-versed and, uh, you know, very respected on and off the field. Top of the third, runner at first, 0-1 pitch. Duran, top foul. Yeah, and he didn't come over, uh, you know, to the United States, you know, until he was in his late 20s. He was already a professional in Japan for, you know, seven, eight, nine years, and then he came over. So if he would have, you know, come over initially when he first went pro in Japan, you know, he would be the all-time hits leader, 100%. Uh, you know, and if you combine his stats with Japan and obviously in the U.S., you know, he's right there with Pete Rose. So... I'm just happy that he was a part of the Mariner organization. And, uh, you know, I, I will always, always have mad respect and love for Ichiro. The first, like, you know, positional player that wasn't a pitcher that was full Japanese. And not only that, but to be, like, amazing, like Hall of Fame. Durant struck out swinging.
Next up for the Red Sox, arguably their best player, third baseman, Rafael Devin. How could you vote against Griffey? You know, but again, sometimes you get these these guys that have votes, you know, that for whatever reason, if the Mariners beat their team or Griffey did something big, you know, against them. And obviously the Yankees, you know, had a big rivalry with, uh, you know, the Mariners. And, you know, and Griffey was stated that, you know, that, you know, he wouldn't want to play for the Yankees. He would just retire. You know, it's like he would want to only be, you know, either Seattle or, you know, Cincinnati played a little brief stint with Chicago. Back, back, back. Gone! Well, there, that's what happens when you end up having their best player up. Raphael Devers with a 400-foot bomb to left center. 2-0 Red Sox. There you go, Judah. Mariner fans with a lot of booze. Next up, shortstop, Trevor Story. Damn. Nice electric bomb there by Rafael Devers. I better not call him the best player, and then he does that in return. Well, that's why. Because you know he's one of the best players, and that's what best players do. They go for a two-run jack to get the crowd out of the game. Yeah, I mean, I follow the I follow the MLB just as closely as I follow, you know, the NFL, college football, and everything else. So and again, you know, to do, you know, matchups of every team, you know, it forces you to know, you know, all the lineups, even lineups that normally you wouldn't care about. Like, you know, when the Mariners play like the Pirates, you know, it's like how many people really give a shit about the Pirates except for Pirate fans. But when I'm doing these games, you know, you get well tuned on, you know, who's up and coming, who's good players, you know, who, who's not that good. Story popped up. There we go. Hanniger. The damage is done, and that's what happens when the best player comes up. And then uh, I say he's the best player. The sports gods listen, and then uh, Devers delivers. Nice job. 2-0 Red Sox. All right, Mariners, your turn. Jessica in the building. What's good? Hey, I do all the time though, you know, but again, you know, I have to be able to keep it 100, right? I can't just be a hater and talk shit about the opposing team. You know, I'm a fan of greatness. And if there's greatness on the field, regardless if it's on the Mariners or not, I'm going to make sure the stream is always going to be 50-50. So, but I did set that up. Jessica in the building. How are you? All right. No problem. Have a great day. And a great, uh, you know, obviously transition as we go into the weekend. And again, I'll be streaming every day. So if you want to pop in and hang out for whatever amount of time, and I'll, uh, I'll definitely keep checking up on you and sending you things, uh, obviously, you know, on socials to make sure that uh, at least, you know, you're as good as you can be with all things considered. All right, eight more. Let's get to 20. All right, let's go. All right, Mariners do up in the bottom of the third, leading off this inning. Third baseman, Josh Rojas. Batting second, 0 for 1. Shortstop, J.P. Crawford. And batting third, 1 for 1, with a stand-up double in his first at-bat. Center fielder, Julio Rodriguez. Let's go, J-Rod. We need you, Julio. Step up, baby. You the man. Pitches outside. 1-1 one, one count. Oh, my God. They definitely are, are giving uh, the pitchers a little bit extra in the zone. Let's go. Oh, Rojas. Rojas, back, back, back to the warning track. And caught. Ooh. I mean, even though that wasn't gone, that's a that's a good sign for a guy that's in the nine hole at third base, arguably the best. No, no, no. The worst player in our starting lineup. So 
you know, that's a good sign. Hopefully uh, next time around, you know, he can get a base hit and maybe we can get some unexpected homers. Yeah, let's go. We're already in the uh, the third inning. Like, sub, donate, comment, share. Shout out to all the people watching on Twitter slash X as well as the people in the room. Next up, one of my favorite players on the team, shortstop J.P. Crawford, grounded out in the first 0 for 1. Let's go. I got the Julio jersey on. Uh, I, got the, I got the chain. I got the hat. I got the do-rag. I got a lot of other things that I'll be able to rep during the season as well. Probably won't be wearing my uh, stitched Julio autograph jersey, though. Got that from, a, you know, my dad is a gift. It's still in the box, in the plastic. 3-0 pitch to JP. Takes a strike looking. I, I disagree. It's the first game of the season, you know. I mean, what did you expect? The Mariners to get five runs in the first inning? The lineup is much, much better than it was in 2023. You know, when you have guys like La Stella at DH, you know, uh, you, you, you got to understand it's going to take some time. And, uh, and again, we ended up going like 1-9-1, and one, and we were the worst team in spring training, and then uh, ended up getting super hot, and then ended up being like 15-13, and 13, so... I'm not worried about being down 2-0. And I don't think it's going to be a long year. Sounds like you're a hater. Low in the corners. Low one count. Let's go, Julio. Low one pitch. Pitch is inside. One one count. Jordan, appreciate you. We need like uh, 10 or 15 Jordans. Big facts. I appreciate you, man. Thank you for showing love and support, and hopefully other people will be able to follow in your lead. Stacks on stacks, racks on racks, a little cactus jack. Bang, bang, $10 ala. Let me know what reds you want me to put up, and I'll throw those up for you once we get into a commercial break. We can go old school. We can go new school. You let me know. $10 holla, 90 to go to hit the first initial goal. Appreciate you very, very much, man. It means a lot, not only to be able to have people come through that are fans of, you know, other teams but love baseball, and now we have a, a Cincinnati Red spokesman on the channel. But not only that, be able to come through and to be able to show love and support and donate, because, you know, this is my full-time job. You know, I'm not doing this for, like, shits and giggles, you know. Like, this is like everything to me you know i got you know I, I have to be able to live and survive so i appreciate you very much man for recognizing that hey nick martini two home runs on opening day and it's the first time it's been done since like 1906 or like 1908 your boy reads he watches film and he knows i got you appreciate you bro Everybody gets a drink. And if I'm lucky, I might even be able to pull it up from today's game. So it's not just like an older photo. Uh, you know, it just depends on how many photographers are out there and what ends up being available for me to format. And you're in luck. I even actually got it from today. Let's go. End of the third inning, 2-0 Red Sox. There we go. Nice job, Nick. Another one here from, uh, oh, that one didn't format. I got another one from today, but it didn't format, though. At least that one is. And let me see if I have one more, if it'll allow me to. Please. No, that one didn't. Let's say that one would have been nice if it would have let me. All right, let's see. 
Oh, but I got this one. I'm two for four from today's uh, today's uh, film. Here we go. Way to put the Reds on the map. Starting it off hot with a big victory today. Let's go. That's from today's uh, action as well. Nick Martini, opening day, two home runs. Not very many players have ever done that in MLB history. You got to go back over 100 years. Nice job. And then let me see if I can get the cream, the cream of the crop. Let's see if I can squeeze in one more here for you from today. Oh, yeah, baby. I'm about three for six based off formatting, but it came through. There we go. Appreciate you, bro, very, very much. Gasses, little dribbler. Come on, Mariners. There we go. Nice hit for Cassis, Judah's favorite player. He's got a lot of potential, you know, and even though Devers is the best player on the team, uh, you know, you could feel like Cassis is going to be, you know, one of the, you know, top two, top three guys. You know, obviously he's hitting cleanup for a reason. He's super young, but he's got a lot of potential. And I even saw that last year watching him. Next up for the Red Sox, right fielder, Tyler O'Neill. First pitch outside, 1-0 count. I appreciate you, man, very much. Bang, bang. We appreciate Jordan. Yeah, definitely 35 to 40 homers for Devers. If he ends up getting hurt, you know, maybe 25 to 32. But, you know, I would assume, you know, that, you know, that 30 to 40 home run range is doable. And, you know, who knows? Maybe he even eclipses the 40 home run range and gets like 41, you know, 42, something like that. No shit, bro. Like, it's frightening when I ended up looking at the uh, starting lineup of 2023, you know, my graphic that I had and looking at the starting lineup and then looking at what we have this year. And even if we start off, you know, a little uh, you know, rough around the edges, this team is much better suited for, you know, runs and hits and better pitching. Like, we're going to have, I feel like, the, a more collective unit, you know, because we got to think we were batting 220, 230 as a team for the whole year. And in the first 60 games, we had one good player, Jared Kalanick. One, only one. So you're telling me that we're, we're not oh, we're not going to have one player that's going to be good in the first 60 games? We're going to have more than one, you know? And we didn't have our DH, Mike Ford, settled in until past the 60-game mark. So we already got Garver there. So, you know, I think that a lot of things are already set up for our success, but still we got to go out there and earn it. Popped up for O'Neal. Yeah, I like Devers too. There's actually quite a few uh, players that, you know, that are on the, the roster that are, are pretty good. You know, Duran is good. Devers is good. Uh, Yoshida, you know, has potential. You know, so it's like you got half of the, the lineup that can really rake. And then the other guys are going to be role players, just like any, you know, team in baseball, unless you're like the Dodgers or the Braves. Bobble. At least we got the force out at second. JP. JP, we need defense from you, bud. Come on now. Now, JP never really had the handle there. Come on, baby. We need that. We need some good defense, baby. Let's go. Next up for 
the Red Sox DHing Masataka Yoshida. 0 for 1. Pitch outside, 1 0 count. Uh, hopefully, we end up getting more support on the uh, MLB side this year than last year, and I think we will. Yoshida, nice hit. Damn it, they got guys on second and third. And even though Judah was mentioning Yoshida gets hurt, you know, but every game that I watched him against the Mariners, he raked, you know, and any other game that I watched him play, he did well. I don't think there was any game that I saw him play last year where he played like shit. Like he was, he was always on base or always making plays. So, you know, he might not be the best player on the team, but he's definitely a valuable piece. I would, I would take him on the Mariners for sure. Next up, center fielder, Zanan Rafaela. Takes a strike. We need to find a way to get a double play here. Otherwise, we're going to be down 3-0. Fatigued. Oh, one pitch. Drop towards third. Double play. Get him at home. Fuck, it hit him off the helmet. You got to be shitting me. Fucking Rojas. All right, we got to get rid of Rojas. Rojas is gone. Bring back Eugenio Suarez at, uh, at third base for defense. Come on, Josh. How the fuck are you going to throw towards home when you hit the guy in the helmet? Motherfuck. Nice job, Judah. 3 0. Red Sox. Brutal. Yeah, obviously in the, you know, in the, the Japanese leagues, you know, not as many games. You know, of course, 162 is by far more than any other sport, so. Fucking bonked his ass. I love me some Eugenio Suarez, and I'll definitely will be rooting for him on Arizona. Popped up for Valdez. Can we get him out, please? Now Mariner fans getting a, a little grumpy. You can hear them a little moaning and uh, whining out there in the crowd. Runners on first and third, top of the four, three zero Boston. Valdez fouled out to third. Next up for the Red Sox, catcher Connor Wong. Come on, Castillo. See, if it was me, I would have rather went with George Kirby you know, as our one and Castillo as the two. You know, but they've given Castillo that role. And I get it, you know, uh, you know, that he's there and he's one of our best, you know, pitchers that we have. But I would have liked to flip it. I would have had Kirby go one and then Castillo two. Uh, and then, you know, and then like Logan Gilbert and then Bryce Miller and then normally Brian Wu, but now Emerson Hancock. But hopefully we can find some offense here before this game is over. Oh, we got him. Get him. Get his ass. There we go. There we go. Good defense there. Tigers, White Sox. Yeah, but at least MSU Tigers was happy because they ended up getting the dub, right? Yeah. I mean, sometimes you're going to have games that end up being 1-0, right? I hear you. All right, let's go to the bottom of the fourth and let's get some runs, baby. You know, I feel like I said with me, I'm always going to be positive. I'm going to be optimistic. You know, when shit is going bad, you know, we can, you know, you know, call out the players or the things that are going on, you know what I mean? But there's always so much negativity and haters that are out there. And I feel that, you know, if you like watching content or where people are yelling and arguing and coming up with terrible takes just to get a reaction or click, that's like lame. You know what I mean? There's so many people that do that where they say things that they don't even mean just to get a reaction. You know, and uh, I just like to keep it 100. You know, whatever we see, we call it how we see it. When teams are doing good, you'll hear it. When teams are doing bad, but there's no point of just, you know, if you're, especially if you're like a Mariner fan and you're a streamer, 
you know, or someone that's, you know, doing social media stuff towards them. I mean, uh, do you really want to just bash them over and over and over again? Like what, you're just going to get a bunch of other Mariner people listening to you bash them? Like that's, that's lame content. You know what I mean? Like be better, you know, like let's try to root for our team to win instead of being like everyone else and hating on them. Stop acting like you're a fucking Astro fan or a Ranger fan when you're a Mariner fan. You know what I mean? Like it's not going to always bounce our way. It takes time to build a winner, right? It's not going to happen overnight. You have to get continuity and chemistry. And uh, obviously we saw a little bit of that in spring training, but as it goes through the regular season, it takes time for teams to click. Let's go to the bottom of the four, leading off second baseman, one for one, Jorge Polanco. Batting second this inning, DHing for the Mariners, Mitch Carver. And batting third this inning, big dumper, little dumper, baby dumper, catcher, Cal Raleigh. Felix Hernandez in the booth. Hell yeah. Keith Felix. You know, too bad we couldn't surround him with more talent back when he pitched. He would be an awesome player to have. Like if we ended up having like Felix in his prime, you know, uh, you know, with Castillo and with Gilbert and with Kirby, what 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 could it be? You know, it could be amazing. Now let me know what's going on in uh, the March Madness as well. Big swing and a miss. One two count. Bottom of the four, three zero Red Sox. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, you got to understand, we didn't make the playoffs for fucking 20 years, and then we ended up getting that Cal Raleigh homer, and we made it, right? But then you can't flip it and be like, oh, we're going to make the playoffs every year for the next 20 years in a row. You know, you're not going to go from not making it for 20 years and then all of a sudden making it in 20 years. You know, it's like, I feel like some fans have horrible expectations, and they just watch stuff on social media, and they don't even make up their own opinion. You know, they just piggyback off some other idiot that's online, and then they feel that's fact. Like, unless you're actually reading, watching film, and watching the games in entirety, you're not going to really understand the whole story. You know, all you're doing is getting chapters or paragraphs of a story that someone wants to throw out as a narrative. You have to be able to be a true fan, and it's not always going to be peaches and cream. That's what makes the big moments mean more. The fans that are real, you know, like Jordan and me and a few of us in the room, like Elliot and Sarah, you know, it's not always going to be great. You have to go through pain and misery, you know, to be able to have the joy and the happiness, right? Unless you end up being a, a fan that takes it for granted. Like if you were a bandwagon Patriot fan, you didn't really have a lot of struggles, you know, once in a while against Peyton Manning, but most of the time you were winning, you know, and you had a great team. So, you know, that's why I feel if you're a Pacific Northwest fan or a fan of a smaller market team like Jordan and Cincinnati, it's, it's not going to be great all the time, but it's always nice to see bottom feeders rise to the top, you know? Seeing teams that normally are dog shit actually be fucking relevant and respected and sometimes even feared. You know, it takes time to be able to build a championship contender. But I guess for some people, they just want to come in here and talk shit and then leave. So, you know, those aren't real fans, you know. Garver. Garver. Back to the warning track. Damn. One away. Next up, big dumper, little dumper, baby dumper, Cal Raleigh. Twelve-one Diamondbacks, they're raking. I'm telling you, uh, you know, even if the Mariners end up dropping this first game, I still think we're going to be one of those teams that really focus and watch. Orioles are going to be good. You know, they're going to be a World Series contender. And obviously, you've got to give respect to the Astros and Rangers. You know for dominating the american league for so many years you know but if there were you know other teams that possibly could step up you know the blue jays were kind of in the mix you know as well but i'm not sure if they took a little bit of a step back you know based on their roster last year to this year but the blue jays will still be relevant they'll still be good you know mariners should be good astros rangers yankees are better with soto uh you know and then obviously the orioles seem like that team that you know, is going to be like possibly like the Diamondbacks from last year where they steadily keep getting better and better and then they eventually hit the pinnacle. Yeah, I, I think, you know, we're, we're going to get there. It just takes time, you know. The 162-game season. You know, I, I feel like a lot of the uh, Mariner haters 
you know, even if you're a quote unquote Mariner fan, you know, it's like you have no patience. You know what I mean? You, you have to be patient and you have to understand how baseball works. You know, it, it, we're, we live in a society where it's like you want results now, 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 now. You know, it's like, oh, I need to have all those subs now. I need to be famous now. I need to be rich now. I need to have uh, all these uh, likes and retweets on my fucking posts like now, now, now. It doesn't work like that. You know, you got to work hard, you know, and, and sometimes it comes down to a little bit of luck. You know what I mean? But to have great results, it takes time. You have to build an empire, and an empire isn't built overnight. You know, I've been building this channel for fucking 12 years, and I'm only 1% into my journey. One. You know, and I'm over 20,000 subs, but I don't feel like it. You know, like, I feel like I got a long ways to go. Like, I feel this channel you know, easily could be at 50,000 subs, 100,000 subs, and beyond. It's just a matter of, you know, if I can get into the algorithm, and if we can get the right people to be able to support, and uh, eventually we'll end up getting there. Bottom of the fourth, 2-2 two -two pitch. Cal, force out at second. Polanco, two away. And like I said, the main numbers for the Mariners typically too was five runs or more. This was from 2023, right? And this is what I was saying. And then we need seven to 10 hits. When we don't get five runs or seven to 10 hits, we lose 90 to 95% of the time. And that will probably stay true again this year. Okay. And we also need to be better in one run games, right? One, zero, two, one, three, two, and also extra inning games. We were very, very good in Julio's rookie year with Cal and George Kirby in 2022 when we made the playoffs in one run games and in extra innings. Oh, Hanager! Yeah! There we go. There's my boy, Mitchie. Yes, three, two, Mariners. There we go. Hey, to go from one Mitch to another, Hanager, baby. He's been great in spring training. Let's go. Glad to have you back. But again, you know, for other uh, quote unquote Mariner fans, they only want to bring up, oh, he gets hurt all the time. Can we get past that and just have a little bit of positivity instead of just talking shit? You know, it's like, yeah, we know he does get hurt, but let's embrace him being healthy and hopefully that he can be hot and let's get dry dance up, baby. Let's go. They, the sports gods heard me. They're like, you know what? He's right. You know, it takes time. And there we go. Hanager, the first home run for the Mariners in 2024, and he made it a good one. Two-run dinger, 3-2 Red Sox. Let's fucking go. Next up, left fielder Dominic Canzone, 0 for 1 with a K. He's pointing up to the sports god, just like O-Dog. Let's go, baby. Nice job. Here we go. I appreciate you. You know, and again, you know, we just want to make sure with all the hard work and time and energy that's put in that we get the proper uh, appreciation and the proper, you know, love back. And, you know, hopefully we'll have, uh, you know, other people, you know, besides Jordan that will be able to step up and be able to help out with the cause. Appreciate you, man. Little chopper. Tough play to first, but got him. We stop the bleeding. I mean, normally you want to be able to get some runs, you know, before you're almost halfway through the matchup. But hey, better late than never. Nice catch out of the glove. Fuck yeah. Let's go. Way to be electric, my boy. Three, two, Red Sox. End of the fourth inning. Let's go to the top of the fifth. Fuck yeah. Lauren in the building, what's good? Here, let's throw up the photos here real quick, see if I can squeeze a couple in. Maybe get Ellie De La Cruz in here for Jordan. Martini, two home runs on opening day, as have been done in over 100 years. Nice job. Red Sox on the map, baby.
Appreciate you. All right, let's go to the top of the fifth, baby. It'll give me another reason to go out of my way to keep up with Cincinnati now. That's how it usually goes. You know, I usually will meet somebody, you know, I'll figure out what their fandom is, and then I'll go out of my way to keep uh, tabs on what's going on, just like I usually do with the Cardinals for Sarah, Padres, obviously, for Elliot. And uh, Red Sox, obviously, for Judah. And now uh, a little Cincinnati Red action for Jordan. I love it. Well, not only getting Hanniger, Hanniger back was big, but it would only be big if he was good. You know, getting him to come back to the team as a fan favorite is only good if you're producing. If you're not producing, then it ends up looking like a dumbass move. So getting him back and him being hot in spring training and ending up you know, carrying that hotness over you know, into the regular season, that was the big part. Yes, welcome back. Wong? When we had uh, Colton Wong, it was the Wong move, you know, but uh, they have a Connor Wong. He'll be a little bit better than uh, Colton, you would assume, even though he's in the nine hole. He'll struggle from time to time, but anyone does in the nine hole. Go for one with a pop out in the third. Pitches outside, one, two count. Three, two Red Sox in the top of the fifth. Pop foul. Come on, Castillo. Let's go. Four innings pitch, four hits, three earned runs, four Ks. Got him. There we go. Make that five. There we go, baby. Too bad Felix Hernandez, uh, again, wasn't on the roster at the same time as Castillo. Can you imagine the, like, secrets Felix could, you know, pass down to Louise? I think they would be, like, really good friends, and they would vibe. Kind of similar style, but, you know, obviously uh, King Felix is uh, obviously a little bit better, a little bit more electric, you know, when he was playing. Not sure if you're ever going to get the same type of uh, statistical uh, greatness that King Felix uh, obtained when he was on the Mariners. Not that saying Castillo is bad because he's not, but uh, I don't know if Castillo is going to be getting a whole lot of no hitters and you know perfect games and you know doing crazy things that we saw King Felix do in his prime. I think so too. I think he's going to have a good year. Appreciate you. Yeah, we'll throw up a photo of him once we get into the uh, commercial break. Duran, right in between the gap. Nice hit by Duran. And that's why they have him leading off, you know, because uh, most of the time he gets on base. Almost every game that I saw, you know, last season, you know, Duran was money. You know, and like I said, you know, he knows where to place that baseball. He can pull the baseball, you know, into left field, you know, or get it over into center field or right field. He's got really good control in the box, uh, good follow through swing. And uh, he's a guy that really get the spark going for the Red Sox leading off. Next up, the best player on the team. I said that last time at bat and he hit a, you know, two run jack. Hey, don't do it again, please. Third baseman, Rafael Neves. I, mean, I put him on the thumb for a reason. I knew he was going to go off today. Tell Castillo to put the hat to the side. Yeah, I always like, and then having Ichiro there too. It's very cool to be able to see the legends. All we're missing is Griffey and Randy Johnson. And this is not just based on you know me you know remembering what happened when the Mariners played the Red Sox, but you know, I watch a lot of baseball. Like when it's baseball season, you know it's like the NFL for me. I mean, I usually try to watch you know games in the morning. I, you know, I'm, I'm exercising with Paisley, but when I get back, you know, I'm always cycling through all the scores. You know, looking at the uh, box numbers on who did well, how many Ks, how many runs were given up. Oh, you know, who went three for four? Who had an RBI? Like I'm always looking at everybody in the league, not just the Mariners. So. You, know, you have to be well versed, especially if you're going to be doing something like this on YouTube as a streamer. 
Top of the fifth, 1-1 one, one pitch. Fucking Devers right up the gut again. Wow, he's flying out there. Sliding in as safe at second base. That's a nice, you know, start off with the inning with Duran and Devas. Next up, shortstop Trevor Story. Like, I think that they should have Yoshida batting third and uh, and then have Story go to, to fifth or sixth. I would swap Yoshida and Story. I would go Duran, Devers, Yoshida, and Cassis, you know, to have those four main pieces. But what do I know? Story's not going to be as reliable as uh, Yoshida at the six hole. I have a mound meeting here with Castillo. Yeah, it's funny how that goes, huh? I hate the guy. Then the guy starts playing well and getting RBIs and whatnot, and you're like, oh, I love him. Over two with a K for shortstop Trevor Story. We got to be able to get out here, try to get into like a double play or a, a, a see if he can get him to chase. A little grounder, or a little pop up. Yeah, I, I'm just looking. I'm just trying to you know do it. If I was the manager, and if I'm looking at okay, how do I beat the Mariners up? What's the best you know top four pieces? But also the reason that Yoshida is at the six hole, so that way you have a good hitter mixed in, other than in the first four pieces. You know, leadoff hitter, two hole, three hole, cleanup. Sometimes you want to make sure you have a, a decent hitter in the five, six, or seven hole, so that way you don't get hits in your first four guys, and then dog shit and the rest of the five. You know, you don't want to have your first four be great and then five, six, seven, eight, nine are terrible. You know, that's not a really a, a constructive way to be able to, you know, have your lineup card. Sometimes you're going to have to mix it up a little bit. So I understand why, you know, Boston, you know, had that particular, you know, but I feel that story will be going down and they will have someone else, you know, probably fill that spot. And I don't know if that will be Tyler O'Neill, you know, Yoshida, or, you know, if uh, Rafaela gets a little bit better. You know, or Valdez, but you're going to see someone else probably take that three hole, I would assume, unless he starts getting better. Top of the fifth, 3 2 Boston. Runners at second and third. One out. Duck swing. Bases are loaded. Fuck my life. Damn it. Yeah. Yeah. We, we got to find a way to get out of this inning. And then, and then of course, you get into one of their up-and-coming guys, you know, arguably the second or third player in the, you know, one of the top four, because obviously you got Duran, Devers, Cassis, and Yoshida. Not the ideal person that you would want to match up right here, the cleanup hitter, a guy that can definitely get you some RBIs for Boston. So, Tristan Cassis. Saw a couple of interviews of him, like we were mentioning, and Judo was mentioning it's his favorite player. Um, you know, last season with the bases loaded, he fucking raked 571 average, four for seven, zero homers, nine ribbies, but he's an RBI machine. One for two. I mean, there's a reason why they have an up and coming player at, at, you know, the cleanup and in the four hole, they believe in him. You know, if they didn't believe in him, then they would have someone like Yoshida there. So chop foul or uh, Raphael Devers, you know, they would have hit somewhere like him there, but I like the, the lineup that Boston has. And that Boston's just trying to get out of last place in the AL East. Back-to-back -back seasons in last place. Judah is ready for a new beginning and a new awakening. He doesn't want to finish in last again. Yeah, when Story is healthy, you know, you can get some numbers out of him. But, you know, health isn't going to be a concern. Same thing with Mitch Haniger. You know, gets hurt a lot. You know, it's either you, you play 60 games, you know, or you play like 120 games. There's no difference. You know, it's like 60 games and you're missing two thirds of the season or you're playing two thirds of the games, 120 to 140 games out of the 162. There really is no in between. 
And that's rough, you know, as a baseball fan, you know, knowing that, fuck, I might only get this guy for a third of the games or two thirds of the games. Chopper, Blanco, get it! Got him at second. But a run scores. 4-2 Boston. But at least there was a diving play by Polanco. I don't know if they're reviewing it, but good effort there. It was he was a little bit out of position. Dives to the ground. A little flip off of two hops. And he just got him at second base. Great play by Polanco. And again, it's nice to be able to have someone at second that we can, I you know, honestly feel that we can bank on not only hitting, but defensively. So yeah, we lost Eugenio Suarez at third, but we picked up a Polanco at second. So, you know, I'm not saying that's an even trade-off, but at least that we can fill one of those positions. Oh uh, yeah, most Ranger fans think they're gonna repeat. Come on, Mariners. And as are, and you know, in baseball terms, also, it's a it's two different sets of games, right? The first six innings is the first game, right? And seven, eight, nine, and beyond is the second part of the game. Once the starting pitching goes out, it's a whole new ball game. You could be down 5-0 and get six runs in the seventh or eighth inning and come back and win. You know, so it just depends on, you know, your mid relievers and your closers and how good they are compared to your starting pitching that day. So you know, some baseball fans that are novices, they, they don't they don't understand that concept. They just see the starting pitcher get robbed. Oh, you lost. And sometimes that ends up being the case. But a lot of times, you know, you have those three innings, seventh, eighth and ninth to come back. And, you know, it would be nicer if you had maybe four or five innings to come back when you're down. You know, but starting pitching usually tries to go to the sixth inning. They get pulled. They get credit for the, the win or the loss. Right. But. You know, three innings to be able to make up ground where the pitcher might have fucked up. Sometimes it's enough, you know, and sometimes you, you know, you can get it into extras. You know, you just have to be able to try to think, okay, if you're down 4-2, you don't necessarily have to get it to 5-4. You just have to get it to 4-4. You know, you just chip away, try to get one, try to get another. And then if you can get it to 4-4 and go to extras, then we'll see what happens. You don't have to try to get everything all in one inning, you know. It's a mindset. All right, let's go to the bottom of the fifth, 4-2 Red Sox. That did a little bit of damage on us there. No surprise. All right, see who's up for the Mariners here. Oh, I was going to get you a photo here. I got to scroll up. Matt McLean. Look you up here real quick. If I can format it quick enough. My rolly thing on my mouse just stopped working, so that's great. At least it does. I mean, it works when I do one program and on another program, it's frozen. But it just makes me have to work a little harder. Let's go. Oh, well, Matt McLean for you. Appreciate you. All right, Mariners, let's go. Ty France up in the box. Go, Ty. 0 for 1 with a K. We're in the bottom of the fifth, 4 2 Red Sox. We'll give Bello some love. So, right now, four innings pitch, four hits, two earned runs, two Ks for Bello. And then for Castillo. Five innings pitch, six hits, four and runs, two walks, five Ks. Come on, Ty. We need you, bud. I need the fucking 2022, uh, you know, Ty France, not the 2023 version. We need all star Ty France. Let's go. Pitch inside for a strike, three two count. Come on, Ty. We need you to be electric, baby. 
Let's go. Tie with a chopper. The second. One away. Two away. One away. Two away. One away. Two away. Ah. Bottom of the fifth. One away. Next up for the Mariners, third baseman, Josh Rojas. And I feel with Josh, no expectations. So if he does anything, home runs, RBIs, it's a magical day. You know, you don't expect him really to do anything throughout the whole season. So, you know, if you don't have any pressure to do anything, and if you do something positive, the fans are going to love you. You know, they're, they're not going to expect a whole lot. So, especially you being in the nine hole. And I would assume that would be for anyone in the nine hole. You know, it's like you're not really expecting a whole lot there. Popped up, out of play, 1-1 one, one count. Shout out to all the people watching on Twitter slash X, as well as the people in the room. Hopefully we'll get a few more goats to come through. And hopefully we can get a little bit more support and love. Go Rojas. Chop foul. All right, so we got 82-52 final. UConn over San Diego State. They won by 30. They might win it all this year. Clemson with a big upset on Arizona, 77-72. Six seed beating a two seed. Illinois is up 36-30 on Iowa State, a three and a two seed. And then North Carolina is barely hanging on the Tar Heels on Bama, 70-67. Seven minutes left in the second half. Come on, baby. Chip away. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Josh Rojas. You don't have any expectations. And sometimes those guys that, you know, you don't expect, oh, he's just going to ground out and pop out and just being a negative, you know, Nelly over and over and over. Have a little bit of optimism. And any time he ends up doing something good, let's acknowledge him and recognize him. He's in the nine hole, right? He's the worst player in the starting lineup. Let's go. Nice job, Josh. Nice little infield single there to help get the rally going. Next up, shortstop, 0 for 2, J.P. Crawford. Time to step up, J.P. Let's go, baby. Try to dance up. Pitch low in the zone, called for a strike. 0-1 count. Come on, baby. And a lot of times with the Mariners, when we end up playing like our best baseball, it's when JP and Julio get on base at the beginning of the game. Like when you see JP, you know, not necessarily get a leadoff homer, but if he ends up, you know, getting a walk or you know, he gets hit by a pitch or just a, a single or a double, and then Julio comes up and either, you know, knocks him in or he ends up getting a two-run homer, that sets the tone. You need to be able to have the guys at the top of the lineup set the tone early within the first two innings, and then that usually sets the tone for the rest of the game. This game has not really been that, so it's going to be a little bit harder to be able to come back, but not impossible. 0-2 pitch to JP, two ground outs. Work the count, JP. There we go, good eye. If that was Julio Rodriguez last year, he would have swung at that. And hopefully uh, Julio will be aggressive when needed, but calculated, and hopefully he'll work the box a little more. But that's the only thing Julio needs to improve on. Stealing bags, 10 out of 10. Defense, no fly zone, 10 out of 10. RBIs, 10 out of 10. Homers, 10 out of 10. But the you know patience in the box, I feel that he's like a five. You know, there's a lot of improvement there. And if he can just be a little bit more patient, he can go from being like a 260, 270 hitter to a 300, 320, 330 hitter. You know, you know, moving up and down throughout the season. You know, 300, 295, 310, you know, uh, 298, 330, maybe going down to, you know, 280. But just, you know, consistently staying, you know, in that 280 to 330 range. You know, he's a superstar and that's what we expect from him. We don't expect him to be a 400 hitter. But if you're a top 10 player in the league, you know, you can't be hitting 200. You know, you can't be hitting 250. You know, we can't be hitting 220, 230 as a team overall. JP popped up on the 2-2 count. Go out of play. Fuck. Good defense there by the Reds. Nah, nah, nah. Red Sox. Damn it. Two away. Come on, JP. Unusual that JP is having such a slow start, but he'll bounce back tomorrow. Guaranteed. 
Next up, center fielder, one for two, stand-up double, Julio Rodriguez. My guy. Let's go, J-Rod. No fly zone. You demand. Let's go. One oh count. Good eye. Let's go, baby. One for two. We need you. We need a bomb, bro. We need that first Julio Rodriguez home run of the season. Let's go. At some point. Julio! Damn it. Popped up. One, two, three inning. Nice defense there by the Red Sox. End of the fifth inning. Four, two, Red Sox. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm a fan of, you know, like I said, I love wrestling. You know, I've been watching wrestling since the 80s. So, you know, whether it be old school WCW, ECW, or WWF, or AEW or WWE now, NJPW Impact, and, you know, ROH and all of those, right? But I love football, NFL, and I love college football. Love, love, love. But once that ends, you know, obviously I have to do hockey as kind of a filler, either that or basketball. And I feel basketball is kind of harder to watch. Going to the game in person at Moda was fun, but like watching games is almost like pulling teeth for me compared to what it was for me in the 80s and 90s. It's just a different type of game, not the same type of superstars I grew up admiring and uh, obviously loving and watching, right? So we do the NHL, but now since we're into baseball, I love it almost every day, you know, and it's not going to be for everyone. It's not everyone's cup of tea, you know what I mean? But again, like my dad, you know, being a Dodger fan since the 50s, meeting Sandy Koufax when I was 10, getting his autograph and a photo, meeting Ken Griffey Jr. and Ken Griffey Sr. when I was seven in first grade and getting the autograph, you know, and just being a, a fan, you know, of, of the Seattle Mariners through and through, through the good times and the bad times. Um, and then also becoming a fan of the league as a whole, just like I am with the NFL and with college football. It's nice. You know, I love the NHL and being able to watch, you know, the teams play. But I feel like with baseball, you know, and obviously being in the Pacific Northwest, I'm always going to have the Ducks and the Mariners at the top with the Buccaneers just right there because I, I don't live in Tampa. So it's like I haven't even been to a game before, you know. But with the Mariners and the Ducks, you know, it's like I, I'm I'm there, you know. Like I, I've had good experiences there, and you know, I'm always going to be a, a Duck and a Mariner, you know, at the very very top. Oh man, I mean, I got a lot. You know, I don't have just one. You know, it's like you know, if it's if I have to go NWO or DX, I'm NWO because I'm NWO for life, brother. Oh yeah. So, you know, Hollywood Hogan, Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, uh, you know, Macho Man. You know, if I'm going like old school, if I'm going like ECW, uh, you know, I'm going RVD and Sabu. Uh, you know, uh, if I'm going WWF Attitude Era, I'm going Stone Cold and The Rock. You know, so it's like I, I got many, many. And then if I'm going now, you know, I'm going Seth Rollins. I'm going Kevin Owens. I'm going Randy Orton. Uh, you know, there, there's just like so many. I like Drew McIntyre as a heel. Yeah, there's there's many, you know, that I like. Uh, Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks and AEW, you know, uh, there's there's a lot you know that I really appreciate and love so you know I, I don't really just necessarily have one I almost have like a stable of like my top 10 you know but even you know I'm not even sure if I could even have this just, just only 10 I'm a big Eddie Guerrero fan you know um, I love Luce Libre wrestling a little bit more up tempo so oh Tony at this point it looks like it's gonna be the Red Sox but I wouldn't count out the Mariners just yet Bash, he says, I need the Mariners to win for the parlay. Yeah, I mean, like I said, when uh, it was WCW in the mid to late 90s, you know, 95, 96, is like NWO started in 96, but you know, 95 to 99 was arguably the best time of wrestling ever. Like it was popular, you know, the Hulkamaniacs in the 80s that I grew up, you know, because I was born in 82. So I started watching wrestling and sports in 85 when I was three. And I'm 41, even though I don't look it, right? I got good genetics. Thank you, mom and dad. 
But, uh, you know, I feel like 95 to 99 through the Attitude Era and WCW and ECW, that was the best time wrestling ever was and ever will be. We got Sassiedo in now. I don't know if I... Uh, and Brash is injured if you're wondering why he's not in. Otherwise, he would be in right now. We even, we even give the manager some love. Let's go, Scott. Come on, baby. Find a way. Hopefully this was the right individual. Obviously, it would normally be Brash. Little cheeky grin. Come on, baby. Top of the six. Four, two, Red Sox. Two, two pitch. Pitch is outside, three, two count. That's one thing that could be better for the Mariners is gonna be the mid relievers and the closers. And a hit, no surprise there. I'm not a big Sauciato guy. Safe at third, are you fucking kidding me? You gave him a triple? Pull him. Unbelievable. Tyler's boo boo. How are you going to let a guy get a triple? A triple? A triple. Like, focus out there. Come on. And I need some more effort out of Dom there out in the left field. You were too, uh, too lax back there. And then he and he bobbled it, and then obviously he decided to go to third. That's unexcusable right there. Did he cash out ten for eighty, or let the mayor? Uh, I mean, that's your call. You know, the comebacks are very real, and once the starting pitching going out, you know, goes out, it's a whole new ball game. So even though we're down four two, is it possible that we could come back and win seven six? Yeah, but it's also possible that we get fucking rocked and we lose seven to two. You know, and they keep going off. So. That's that's something I think it has to be at your discretion. But that's uh, you know, I've never been a Sociedo guy, you know, and like I said, I like Brash, you know, and I like Seawald at the closer, and I like Munoz, you know, but still, uh, even with those names being like recognizable and good, sometimes they're terrible. Sometimes Brash is amazing. Sometimes he's dog shit. Seawald is now on the Diamondbacks. He was good for us, but you saw what happened when he went to the World Series. He got fucked up. You know, by the by the Rangers, right? So he has his as good and bad moments. And Munoz sometimes is lights out, but other times he's dog shit. So it's like, and I get it. You can say that for any mid reliever or closer in baseball, but consistency is king. And you know, if you want to be a good team and a playoff team and a World Series contender, you got to have good mid relievers and closers. You know, you can't just be oh starting pitching and then you're starting nine. It's more than that. You know, it's it's like acting like offensive line doesn't matter in football. It fucking does. So. Crone zone. Well, who did good for you guys today? I didn't get a chance to go through your Padre uh, lineup today. Strike on the corner. De Reyes. One, two count. go two out nice job sauce not a fan but you know what can you do you know you're gonna have players that you like and you're gonna have players that you know it is what it is you know you hope for the best but Top of the six, P 
two outs, runner at third, Connor Wong. Ross joins the show. Well, hopefully he doesn't get pulled quick. Wong, chop foul. Top of the six with two outs, four, two Red Sox. Connor Wong, 0 for 2 with a K in the nine hole. Pitches outside, one, two count. Ooh, Alabama just took the lead. Fuck. RBI for fucking Wong. An RBI for the fucking nine hole. Unbelievable. But that's what happens when you end up giving up a, a fucking triple when it shouldn't even have been a triple, and then you get a cheap one there. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult to be able to come back now. I mean, it's not un impossible, but, I mean, if you got garbage pitching like this, it's like if you were going to complain about Castillo, Saciedo is a billion times worse. I mean, if you're going to let guys at the end of the lineup start raking on you, you're fucked. And Duran, at least we got him out. All right, bottom of the six, 5-2 Red Sox. Saito, boo! I got to message my buddies real quick. I'll be like, sauce is garbage. Sauce is garbage. And then garbage can emoji. Boo. Boo, 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 boo. All right, Mariners. We're not giving up just yet. We're in the bottom of the six. Let's see what we get here. All right, this is a good part of the order. And hopefully we can end up getting a little bit, you know, even if we only get one run, you know, in this bottom of the six, that'll help. Just chip away each inning. So next up, second baseman, one for one, Jorge Polanco. Batting second this inning, 0 for 2, DHing for the Mariners. Needs to get his first hit for Seattle in the regular season. Mitch Garver. Start playing like you're on the Rangers, damn it. And batting third, one for two with a run. Catcher, big dumper, Cal Raleigh. Maybe Cal can go for a homer. Maybe we get Polanco up, Garver. Maybe he ends up striking out or pumping up or whatever. And then maybe Cal can hit a two-run jack. You know, and then we got Hanniger up after that. So, you know, maybe we can get, hopefully, to Hanniger in the lineup and we get a little bit of magic. Too much sauce. Tyler, Tyler, Tyler. We're at 10, 90 to go. I'm actually surprised at some of the other, um, you know, Mariners you know, people, but again, you know, they might be busy or, you know, they might be at the bar or, you know, at their friends and whatnot. But, you know, a lot of those will start cycling through. And I imagine Reflect will be in here before the stream ends, depending on what he has got going on. So it's a long season. So we'll get more and more Mariner fans to come through and, and hang out with us. So I mean, I, I'm going to be doing the most games out of any, you know, uh, you know, baseball Mariner streamer. So hundred to probably 130 games out of the 162 unless i end up doing all of them but i mean at some point or another you know there'll probably be uh you know because especially when they have games that are on like at one it's like that's that's tough for me because this is my full-time job and if people are at work you know it's like we might not be getting as many likes or subs or donos if i'm doing a game at fucking like noon or one you know so that kind of hurts my bottom line a little bit but you know, hopefully we'll uh, continue to grow and we'll get more people to come show love and support. Bottom of the six, five, two Red Sox. And at some point we'll, uh, we'll get Cyberpunk, you know, coming through and showing some love and 
I, I need it, you know, because like I said, you know, I get I get donos on the super chat, but I don't get that until a month later. So if I got bills and shit I need to pay, you know, I need to get Cash App donos at some point or another to be able to pay the things that I need. All the way to the wall, popped up, and now it went away. It's all good, Jorge. Five two Boston, bottom of the six. Next up, over two DH in for Seattle, Mitch Garver. Won the World Series last season with Texas. 19 homers, 50 rebounds. Last season, both second most of his career. Played the first five seasons with the Minnesota Twins. 2024. I see you, baby. Let's go, Mitch. Grounded out into a double play and a line out. Broken bat, a little chopper to the shortstop, two away. Damn, we need to find that rhythm. And baseball is a, is a, a game about runs, you know, and being able to get into a little bit of momentum in one inning. You know, getting three consecutive hits in a row or getting guys, you know, together. You, know, you just can't have one guy and then, you know, eight guys get out. You got to be able to string again, you know, a little bit of a two to three hits consecutively to kind of get a run going. Let's go, big dumper. I need you, baby. Let's go. First pitch fouled towards first base. Oh, one count. Oh, one pitch. Good eye. Pitch is inside, one, one count. Big swing and a miss. One, two, Cal. Come on, Cal. I need some of this, baby. Bring that electricity, baby. We need it. We need you. Let's go. Yeah, Bama hanging tough. They might knock off North Carolina. That'll bust a lot of brackets. I mean, a lot of brackets already busted, but Cal, chop foul towards third base. One, two, count. Led all MLB catchers in home runs in the last two seasons, but all these quote-unquote experts don't even think he's a top 10 catcher. Ridiculous. He could be better defensively. I, I will be, you know, honest about that. Throwing guys out, you know, he's not like a Benti, you know, Benito Santiago or anything like that, where, you know, or like a Pudge Rodriguez, where he can fire guys off off the knees alone. But as far as a power hitter, you know, he's the best. I don't think there's a, you know, he's got, he's like a Mike Piazza of this generation. You know, he needs to get a little bit more love. I love him. His dumper, Cal Raleigh. And the crazy thing is, is he might end up getting replaced by Harry Ford in a year or two. And then we'll have to move him to DH with Mitch Garver. Cal Raleigh. Shout out to all the people watching on Twitter slash X, as well as the people watching in the room. Appreciate you. Love you. Like, sub, donate, comment, share. Help your boy out with the algorithm. We'd greatly appreciate it. Count is full. Three, two pitch. Got him. Big strikeout by Campbell. Fuck. That's tough. End of the sixth inning, five to Red Sox. Tough part of the order coming up here for Boston, too. And uh, hopefully it's not Sauciedo still. Hopefully we move on from him. I don't want him pitching anymore. I saw enough. You got an ERA of nine. You're terrible. ERA of seven for fucking Luis Castillo. Come on, man. And of course, one of the, uh, you know, pivotal points, you know, in this matchup, in this particular inning, we're in the top of the seventh, leading off third baseman, two for three with a run and two RBIs and a K, Rafael Devas, their best player. Hopefully he doesn't go yard. Batting second, 0 for two with a base on ball and a K, shortstop Trevor Story. We will probably get him out. And batting third, first baseman, one for three with an RBI, Tristan Casas. Tough part of the lineup here. 
Let's go. Goats, where are you? Apparently some goats don't care about baseball as much as us. But they could still come through and show love. You know, this, opening day is a big day. You know, like to me, opening day for baseball is as big as opening day for the NFL. You know, like I feel like even though there's going to be more people that watch the NFL and root for the NFL, the importance of opening day and that magic and that feeling that you get of waiting and waiting and waiting, you know, I feel the same type of way. Like when NHL starts or the NBA, I don't have that feeling. You know what I mean? But when I, for baseball, you know, starts or college football or the NFL, it's like, you know, my excitement level is like an 11 out of 10. Top of the seventh, five to Red Sox. All right, good. We pulled them. Saucedo's garbage. We got Bolton in now. Come on, Cody. Can't be any worse than what we saw with Saucedo. Saucedo is so shitty. He shouldn't even be on the team. That's how bad he is. I don't think anyone on the the you know Mariner fan base you know, you know no you know I get it. It's like you want to be able to have like a lefty, but if he sucks, what's the point? You know you got to make sure you have a little bit of righties and a little bit of lefties. But just to have him on the roster just because he's a lefty is stupid. Like you got to be able to improve that spot. And normally that would have been Brash, so Brash being injured doesn't help our cause right now. Popped up. There we go. One away. Mid relievers and bullpen. We need to improve, baby. Wow, Bama's up by two with two seconds left. Illinois, 53-49 with nine minutes to go, and then Clemson with the upset, and UConn, obviously, with the dominant victory. Give me some stats, Elliot. Big strike right down the middle. D-backs, most runs in one inning on opening day since 1914 runs. Yeah, Eugenio Suarez, he's probably happy. Corbin Carroll, love it. You know, another interesting stat that I found out, Corbin Burns, who had an amazing game for the Orioles, he grew up in Oregon. He went to high school in Oregon in Grants Pass, then moved to California, and then obviously, you know, did his thing. Crazy. I did not know that Burns, you know, it's like you never know how many people actually come out of here, you know, out of the Pacific Northwest, but specifically Oregon. You learn something new every day. Popped up, two away, story lined out to right. Thank God. Nice job, Hanniger. Going down to one knee. Next up, first baseman, one for three, winning the RBI. Judah's favorite player, Tristan Casas. Pitch right down the middle for a strike. Little chopper. There we go. Got him.
All right, Mariners, we need you, baby. All right, we're in the bottom of the seventh. Mariners down by three runs. Mariners do up one for two with a run and two RBIs. Right fielder, Mitch Haniger. Two run Jack, and we need you again. Batting second this inning, 0 for 2 with a K. Left fielder, Dominic Canzone. And batting third, 0 for 2 with a K. First baseman, Ty France. Come on, baby. Wake up. Go Mariners. Let's go. Let's go, Hanniger. Pitch is low and outside. 1-1 one, one count. Come on, Mitch. Oh, unbelievable. That's March Madness for you, huh? A lot of a lot of you know dreams just ripped out, you know. That's why, you know, North North Carolina and Duke and Kentucky, they don't really have the same type of you know, aura about them. You know, a lot of times you have to have that elite head coach there, you know, like a, like a Dean Smith or a Roy Williams, you know, to be able to overcome just be, you know, just because it's North Carolina doesn't mean you're going to win. Little blooper by Mitch Hanniga, baby. There we go. Mitch bringing that hot, hot, hot electricity from spring training, carrying it over like Jared Kalanick in 2023. Let's go, baby. And anybody else match Mitch Hanniger's electricity. Let's go. Next up, left fielder Dominic Canzone. Get a Calzone for my guy Canzone. Pitching change. Let's go, Dom. 0 for 2. I mean, we just got to be playing better. I mean, too many of our players are ice cold. Okay, let's go through each player here. Uh, that's, you know, doing either good or bad, right? So JP Crawford, 0 for 3, not good. Julio, 1 for 3, I guess that's decent, right? Jorge Polanco, 1 for 2, that's decent, right? And then uh, Garver, not having a good game, 0 for 3, come on, bro. You know, we had Mike Ford, we need you to do something. Otherwise, you're putting up like La Stella numbers, and that's terrible, right? Cal Raleigh, 1 for 3, pretty good, right? Hanniger, 2 for 3, doing the best so far. And then uh, Dominic Canzone, 0 for 2. By France, 0 for 2. Even Josh Rojas has a fucking hit. Come on, guys. Need more hits collectively as a unit. Let's go. Pray to the sports gods, Dom. Yeah. I'm happy that he's doing well. He's home. Let's go. Cracking down 2-1 to the Ducks in the third period. That's tough. Ducks are terrible. Let's go over the scores in the MLB today. We got Guardian 6, Athletic 0, mid-8. Mariners down by three runs in this game. Diamondbacks up 16-1 to against the Rockies in the 6. My God. Brewers, Mets was postponed. Orioles 11, Angels 3. The Orioles are the real deal. Braves and Phillies postponed. Tigers 1, White Sox 0. Twins 4, Royals 1. Yankees with a comeback, 5-4 on the Astros. Nice job, Yankees. Pirates won 6-5 and 12 over the Marlins. 
Padres six, Giants four for Elliott, Dodgers seven, Cardinals one, sorry, Sarah, Blue Jays eight, Rays two, Reds eight, Nats two for Jordan, Rangers four, Cubs three and 10. And now uh, that is the night. Should have never brought Saucedo in. Terrible. Now we got Dylan Moore in. Golly. Demo is in. Let's go, Dylan. Dylan, 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 Dylan. Come on, Demo. I like that photo. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Pitch, hit, homer to center, 409 feet, 5 4 Red Sox. Let's go! Two run jack by Mitch Hanniger, two run jack by Dylan Moore. Are you fucking kidding me? That's what happens when you put on a fire photo on the screen. The sports gods are like, you know what? I like that fucking photo too. Bang, bang, bang. Five, four, Red Sox. Dylan, 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 Dylan. That is my fucking guy. Let's go. Trident's up. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. There we go. Demo. Oh. All my Mariner homies. There we go. Friday, it's up. Fuck yeah, we're back in it. It's funny, we're, you know, we've only had two really good swings, you know, and there you go, you got two home runs off of it. Yes. Let's go M's. See, and that's what happens, you know, when you end up watching a game, when you end up getting down like, you know, four to one or, you know, three to zero or, or two zero, you know, it feels like, oh, you know, it, the game's over, you know what I mean? But with baseball, once the starting pitching goes out for both teams, it's a brand new ball game, you know, so you could even be up five runs and find a way to come back, you know, and obviously being down, you know, the way that we were down early, being down two zero and three zero and then making it three two and then obviously having it be five two and then oh we came back and then they took the lead again oh it's over you know early on oh it's over now You're, you guys are down five two now it's over the two nice quality swings by Hanniger and Demo and uh, you couldn't ask for a better result for Demo off the bench in his first game in 2024 let's fucking go we have a chance now hell yeah Way to bring it, baby. That just boosted my mental health. Like, where are the rest? Of, where are the rest of the homies from last year for the Mariners? Where are they at? It's like you know, I'm going to be doing every game. Come join your boy and watch with me. Let's go. Fuck yeah, man. Demo. That was so sweet. They brought in a new pitcher, and we said, Nah, nah, nah. It doesn't matter. Fuck yeah. Oh, the former Red Sox is getting in. Pinch hitting. All right, Louise, show me. And it'll probably take time. You know, some people, you know, might be just watching the game or busy or whatnot, but... I mean, after they see that I'm doing game after game after game, I mean, it should already be a given, but. Let's go. Your eye is. Uranus. Let's see what Louise can do. Padre's top prospect at one point. And then injuries. And then now he's on the Mariners. 
Come on, Louise. Hey, MLB starts at second base, third base, and shortstop. So maybe, you know, over Rojas, maybe Louise will be at third base. I mean, if he ends up, you know, hitting and, you know, defending and playing better, I wouldn't mind. If we have to go from Rojas to Urias, uh, you know, whatever, you know, whoever's going to be more consistent. The rally's alive, Jordan. Oh, wow, really? How's your mom doing? Uh, you know, with the health and everything, is she better? Hopefully things are, are good for you and the fam. Struck him out. He said, sit down. Well, that was short-lived. That's why you're not starting, Louise. And you know, it's crazy. Out of my projected uh, lineup based off the show yesterday, last night, it was exactly 100% correct. I'm not going to get it 100% correct all the time, but every every spot was in the exact uh, order that we had and projected in last night's show. So, All right, come on, JP. Let's not go 0 for 4, bud. You're 0 for 3. You're one of my favorite players. Let's find a way. Even if you have to get on by walk, you know, you have to work the count, even if it means not swinging. Do what you need to do, right, to be able to get on base, and that's what might happen on this. Now he's already up 2-0. Right? Don't swing. The guy can't throw strikes. He's not going to throw three in a row. Just take the walk. And hopefully he's smart enough. And if he does that, maybe Julio will go yard and will take the lead 6-5. On the corner for a strike, 2-1 count. I'm trying to foreshadow. Crypto in the building. What's good? Right down the middle. 2-2 two -two count. 5-4 Red Sox, bottom of the seventh. And that's one thing about baseball I love, too, is that no matter, you know, if you feel like you're out of the game, a lot of times in basketball, I know there's runs, but normally when it's over, it's over, right? But like in NFL, college football, and baseball, you know, like I said, depending on the momentum and the Uncle Mo, you know, comebacks are real and they can happen. Same thing can happen in the NHL as well, depending on the matchup. But I feel the, the comebacks are more on the baseball side. JP struck out 0 for 4 night for JP, but at least we ended up getting the two-run homer by Demo. You know, we're just chipping away. You know, and then the next inning, we try to get one run and get it to 5-5. Five, five. And then the next inning after that, try to go up, you know, 6-5 if possible. So let's go. But I enjoy doing baseball streams, you know, more than NHL streams. It's not like I don't like the NHL streams. I do enjoy it, but it's like more filler content while we're waiting for baseball to come after the NFL is over. Well, he's alive, and at least we're not getting embarrassed 5-0. You know, it's just like we need more of our, you know, key contributors to step up. You know, it's been a, an off night. Uh, JP Crawford, go over this real quick. So JP Crawford, 0 for 4. Julio, one for three. Polanco, one for two. This one hurts right here. Garb, 0 for three. We, you need to be better, bro. We brought you over from the Rangers. That's unacceptable. Cal Raleigh, one for three. Haniger, two for three. Dom was 0 for two. And then obviously, uh, you know, got benched. And then we brought in Demo. And what happened? Demo went one for one and went with a two run homer. And then another person that's not doing too well, obviously, Ty France. There's a reason why you're in the fucking eight hole. You know, you're sitting fucking 0 for 3. Step it up, dude. Lose some weight. Get better. And then uh, Rojas, obviously, was 1 for 2. And then they brought in Urias. He should have stayed with Rojas. Now, if Rojas was 0 for 2, then you bring in Urias to pinch it. But not when he's 1 for 2, dummy. You know, these little subtle things that service needs to be able to be aware of. You know, it's like, I, I understand you want to have certain guys. You know, but what are the chances of Demo coming in and homering? And then what, Urias is going to come in and homer also? You have to understand, like, not every guy is going to be able to get on base. And I know you want to be able to see what the team looks like, you know, with each, with each you know, position in the regular season compared to spring training. But come on now. All right, we're in the top of the eighth. O'Neal. Fucking hell, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Tyler O'Neill with a solo jack. Not our pitching stinks. Fucking Bolton. O'Neill homer to right center, 6-4. Anytime we get close, our pitching just, you know, throws the game away. 
and it shows you how important pitching is. It's not only hitting, it's pitching, it's mid relievers, it's starters, and it's closers. You know, Saucedo is garbage, Bolton is garbage. We need Matt Brash. You know, it shows you like how important it is. Like, you know, it's like, yeah, the starting nine is great and starting pitching is great, but if you have shitty mid relievers and closers, you're not gonna win a whole lot of games. Frustrating. Five straight opening days with a home run. MLB record, Tyler O'Neill. Motherfuck. Fucking Tyler. Yoshida pops up. One away. Brutal, brutal, brutal. Nice job by Tyler O'Neill. Next up, Sedan Rafaela. Gosh, man. Just, just right when we get back into it. Like pitching, boo. We need crash. Yeah, it is a record. It just popped up. Nine hits tonight, five for extra bases, which is uh, ridiculous. One for three with a triple and the six, an RBI and a run. You know, but I mean, I hope the Mariners will be able to address, you know, those things. And I get it, you know, being able to get the starting five and, you know, having the positional players. But we need to really start investing big dollars in mid relievers. I don't care even if you pay them like a regular, you know, positional starting five, you know, rotational guy. Even if you have to overpay, but you get the best mid relievers that are in the league to come to your team. You know, that's what's going to help you win a hell of a lot more games. You know, if you got great mid relievers and closers, you might get 20 additional wins. That could be the difference between, you know, making the playoffs and not, you know, making the World Series or not. I don't know why more baseball teams don't pump out big dollars, you know, for the best mid relievers and closers. I mean, that's where I would be putting, that's like, you know, investing in your O-line and your D-line in the NFL. Like if you're just going to get quarterback, running back, wide receiver, and tight end, and your O-line and your defense are shitty, how good do you think you're going to be? Not very, you know, you're going to win some games because the offensive pieces are good, but if you don't got no O-line or D-line or defense. That's like, you know, you got this Lambo and Ferrari, you know, in the driveway with no gas in it. You ain't going nowhere. Brutal. Popped up. One, two, three inning. Now we go to the bottom of the eighth. All right. We need we need production and we need it now. Next up, one for three. Julio Rodriguez. This is what we need. Try dance up. All right, I need to talk it into existence. Solo Jack, Julio Rodriguez, 6'5". Let's go. Chip away. You feel me? Let's go. Come on, baby, we need you. on Julio we need you let's go J-Rod do up in the bottom of the eighth one for three with a stand-up double Julio Rodriguez come on J-Rod batting second one for two second baseman Jorge Polanco. And if there was a time that you need to step up for being a champion on the Rangers, don't go 0 for 4 like JP, PH, batting third this inning. Be a hero, Mitch Garver. Let's go. Let's go, J-Rod. Be electric, my guy.
Yeah, bullpen is what, you know, ends up, you know, bringing you a championship. You know, great mid relievers. And you got to have more than just one good mid reliever. You have to have like three. You know, a guy, you know, that you can have in the sixth, the guy you can have in the seventh, the guy you can have in the eighth. You know, like three or four guys that are quality. And then you have to have an amazing closer or two, you know, that you can go through depending on you'll have your main, but you got to have a backup as well. Bottom of the eighth. Let's go, Julio. Pitches outside on the corner for a strike. Come on, baby. Come on, J-Rod. Come on, baby. Come on, J-Rod. 6-4 Red Sox. At least it's not a boring game where it's like, you know, 0-0 right now. You know. Big swing and a miss. One, two count. Shout out to all the people watching on Twitter slash X, as well as the people in the room. And hopefully we get some more people that will uh, support other than Jordan. Uh, this was the problem that we, you know, that we had with me putting in, you know, so much effort and energy, you know, in MLB streams last year. And a lot of times, you know, we weren't getting the support that we, you know, honestly deserved here. Punched him out. And especially if we want to be able to grow the channel. And if you want, you know, other newbies to be able to support, you know, we got to have more support as a group. Unless you want your boy to be homeless, not be able to pay any of the bills, not be able to feed Paisley, just be miserable and get into a state of depression. I don't think anyone wants that for me. Unless you're a hater. Bottom of the eighth, 6-4 Red Sox. Let's go, Polanco. Big swing and a miss. 0-2 count. Bottom of the eighth, six four Red Sox. Pitches low and inside. One two count. Big swing and a miss. Struck him out. Two away. Next up, DH, 0 for 3, Mitch Garver. Come on, Mitch. We need you to homer like now. Or at least get on base with a single at the very least. Or just get on first, get hit by a pitch, you know, take a walk. I don't care what it is, but you got to get on base for Cal Raleigh. You get on base, Cal Raleigh might be able to bring you home. Takes a strike. Grounded out in the six, bottom of the eight, six four Red Sox. Two away, one one pitch. Pop foul, one two count. Come on, Mitch. One two pitch to Garver. Good eye. Two two count. I mean, take a walk. I mean, we haven't really had many opportunities, you know, to you know get guys on base. You know, and again, singles, doubles, triples, home runs are great. But if you get hit by a pitch or you take a walk, that's just as good as a single. There we go. Stand up double. Mitch Garber, baby. I thought it was a homer. He connected on the sweet spot right there. Right on the corner. 
Off the wall. Nice. All right, baby. Here we go. Big dumper. Cal Raleigh. Let's get a homer here and tie it up. We need, we need some of this. Come on, baby. Let's go, big dumper. We had a two-run homer, two-run homer, and let's get another two-run homer. Huh? What you say, Cal? Get your dump truck ready. Let's go. Come on, baby. We cashed in with two two-run homers. So that way we don't get embarrassed in this game. 6-0 or 6-1. It's 6-4. With one swing, we could get it to be tied up. Not necessarily saying that we're going to be able to hang on and win even if we were to tie it up. Our pitching right now is not very good. But as we go into the ninth, it'll be Munoz. And Munoz is either electric or terrible. But he'll be the best one out of everybody you know, that we've had so far tonight. Fuck, grounder. Motherfuck. Good defense there by the Red Sox. End of the eighth inning. We leave one stranded. 6-4, Boston. End of the eighth inning. Let's go to the top of the ninth. All right, let's see what they got here. If we actually have a favorable lineup here. All right, leading off for the Red Sox. One for three with an RBI and a K. Catcher Connor Wong. Batting second, one for four with a run and a K. Left fielder, Jared Duran. And batting third, the best player on the Red Sox, two for four with a run, two RBIs, two run homer with a K. Third baseman, Rafael Devez. Oh, every time we have a comeback, there's a little bit of a setback, but that's baseball. But again, it shows you how important, you know, those mid relievers and the closers are. And again, you know, if we had better pitching, if we could have had Matt Brash instead of Sauciedo and Bolton, maybe we're tied right now. And so, you know, maybe it's a 4-4 game instead of 6-4. You know, it's not good when you look at the pitching. Yeah, Castillo, ERA, 7.20. Sauciedo, ERA of 9. Uh, Bolton, an ERA of 4.50 garbage and now he's out and now we have a Voth coming in this is terrible you know that, that's what I'm saying you you get all the focus you know on the starting pitching you know with Castillo and, and fucking Logan Gilbert and George Kirby and Bryce Miller and Wu and Emerson Hancock and, and then we you know it's like we got to make sure we're focusing on these fucking mid relievers and closers because this these are where the games are slipping away you know, the difference between winning an extra 10 games a season or more, you know, are going to be, you know, in that particular area, probably 20 or 30 games. You know, you, you can go in either direction. We got George Kirby tomorrow against Nick Pavetta, Logan Gilbert versus Cutter Crawford on Saturday. Uh, and then we're going to have Bryce Miller and Garrett Whitlock on Sunday. And I'll be doing all of those games. Penix Jr. did have a good pro day. He's really the only quarterback that I uh, think that's, you know, honestly, it's going to pan out. I mean, like I said, I feel like this quarterback class is is kind of getting a little bit more overhyped. I'm not really big on Caleb. I'm not really big on J.J. McCarthy. You know, Jaden Daniels and, uh, you know, Drake May, I could definitely see them busting. And then Bo Nix might not be able to pan out on every single team that would draft him. You know what I mean? Like, if he goes to Denver, it could work, but it might not. You know, but I feel like with Michael Penix Jr., he's the best quarterback in the draft, in my opinion. He probably will be picked last out of the other six quarterbacks. But if he ends up getting picked sixth, you know, out of six quarterbacks, then whoever ends up getting them, you know, is going to end up getting a steal. Whether he ends up on the Raiders, if he ends up on the Vikings, or the best fit for him would be the Los Angeles Rams. He would probably have to sit behind Stafford for a year or two, but throwing the Puka and Cup, you know, would be pretty good besides Jefferson. Addison and Hawkinson, but Vikings and Rams would be the best fit. The only thing I worry about with Penix is that the Vikings offensive line and defense is dog shit, and I don't want him to get fucking obliterated out there, but I don't got a whole lot of faith 
you know, and all the other guys. Everyone else in the media can talk it up, but I'm not sold on Caleb Williams. I'm not sold on J.J. McCarthy. I'm not sold on Drake May. I'm not sold on Jaden Daniels. And uh, with Bo Nix, I feel pretty good about him, but I don't think he would succeed in every single place. It's like limited. It has to be the right team with the right supporting cast, with the right coach and the right mentor. And Bo might have to play for two or three teams before he pans out, kind of like Baker Mayfield, where you find your home. And then with Penix, he's the only one, in my opinion, that, you know, if you look at the yards, you look at the touchdowns, you know, he's been the best quarterback, you know, out of all those quarterbacks the last two years. So... You know, it's, it's up to the execs to be able to figure it out. And he's a lefty, which gives him another advantage. There's not a lot of defenses go against lefties very well. I mean, look at Tua. Tua's not the best quarterback in the league, you know, but he can put up top five, top ten stats in certain statistical categories because he's the only lefty, you know. So you have to think about that. So everyone's going to have their opinion, but don't be surprised in this quarterback class if most of those guys fail. You know, especially depending on the teams they go to, Bears, you know, fucking Patriots, you know, uh, you know, the Raiders, you know, depending on where they end up going, you know, Washington, uh, Commandos, uh, a lot of those destinations aren't very good. So, but we'll see. Yeah, but think about Bo Nix and Denver can work, but other than Denver, where else would it work? You know what I mean? And even with Bo Nix and Denver, it might not work. You know, because, you know, look at the offensive line. You know, look at the defense. You know, running game. You know, there's still a lot of holes in Denver. It would be good for you, and it would be good for Denver fans to get Bo Nix because you have Sean Payton mentoring him. But if the offensive line doesn't do a good job, Nix will get fucked up. You know, like I said, I think he's got a skill set, but I don't think Penix uh, or Nix, you know, would be able to be good at, at any destination. You know what I mean? I feel like the only one that would be able to succeed almost anywhere is Michael Penix Jr. With Knicks, he's number two, you know, and I think that he would be able to succeed, but maybe only on maybe like five or six teams, you know, that he might be able to, but it all depends on supporting cast, head coach, mentors, O-line, defense. You know, I don't think Knicks would be able to just go anywhere and be amazing. You know, he might have to be like Baker where, you know, it might not work out on that first team, but eventually it will work out. He just has to find the right coach and the right team if Denver doesn't pick him. You know, like if Bo Nix went to the Raiders, could it work out? Maybe, you know, but again, if you go to a team that has a shitty offensive line, even Michael Penix Jr. could fail going to Minnesota if the offensive line doesn't get improved and the defense stinks. So I definitely think that the quarterback class is being overhyped. Got one. I honestly think the offensive line and wide receivers are better in this draft than the quarterbacks. Everyone says quarterback, 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 but I, I don't think the quarterbacks are really that good. I think they're overhyped. You know, just like in the Trevor Lawrence draft and the and the other draft. If you go back and look in the last couple years, you know, the last couple drafts have been hyped, but have they really been that good? No. You know, Kenny Pickett, you know, Malik, not good. And then you got the Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Justin Fields. Trey Lance, Mac Jones, that was a garbage draft, but everyone thought it was good at the time, right? So this one has potential to have one or two pan out, one or two to pan out in their second or third team, and you're gonna have two or three that are gonna bust. It's just, that's how it's gonna go. You might only have really one solid piece, and then one that, you know, it might take a little while, but they'll get there, you know? Not all six are gonna fucking pan out. Like the most that you're gonna probably have pan out out of the draft is two. Even though the names are hype, you know, but the offensive linemen in this draft and wide receivers are much better than the quarterbacks overall. But again, it's, it depends if you watch film and if you're on top of things or not. And it's not sexy to draft an offensive lineman, but the, the teams that do, that get guys like Jackson Powers, you know, you'll, you'll definitely benefit from it long term. Popped up, two away. Yeah, lots of potential. And, you know, and again, you know, the only thing that's going to hold Michael Penix back is his injuries, but he hasn't had any major ones in the last two years. You know, he was good on Indiana. He's good at the Huskies. You know, and he can make all the throws. You know, he's got the athleticism and the speed. He's a winner. He's got a good mental mindset. Uh, he's not going to get in trouble off the field. And he's a lefty. Nice spiral. You know, again, like I said, I think the Rams and Vikings would benefit the most. And hopefully he ends up going there. If he ends up going to the Raiders, you know, it, it probably won't be that good because the O-line stinks. 
you know, and like I said, you got guys like Devontae Adams you could throw to, but if your O line doesn't give you time, you're not going to be able to get the fucking ball down. You know, but Penix has got that skill set, and you know, I feel like Knicks and Penix have the best chance to be able to succeed, depending on what team they go to. And again, McCarthy, I would be shocked if he pans out and turns into a top ten quarterback. Daniels and May are project guys where they, you know, could pan out, but I could definitely see them busting. And then Caleb, you know, yeah, he could end up being Patrick Mahomes 2.0 of the NFC, but I think it's more likely that he ends up busting, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, regardless if he wants to wear lipstick and he wants to end up painting his fingernails, you know, this uh, younger generation, you know, that's kind of a norm. You know what I mean? But again, I'm not sure if that's going to fit with the Chicago fan base. You know, and you can do whatever you want. You know, you want to end up wearing lipstick. You want to end up wearing, you know, pink nails. That's fine. But for like a nitty gritty town like Chicago, there's definitely going to be some fans that are going to be turned off by that. And then, you know, there's a chance that he's not going to fail because of the lipstick and the nails, but it's about the focus. You know, is he going to be actually focused on football or is he going to be focused on social media? You know, I have concerns about him and, you know, think about it the Bears haven't really had a, you know a good quarterback for a long long time since what Jake Butler you know so we'll see we'll see where it goes but Michael Penix Jr. to me is the best quarterback out of the uh, draft class by a billion it's not even close and I'm a Duck fan so if I'm a Duck fan saying that that should mean something I'm not biased saying oh Bo Nix is the best you know even Bo could fail you know, he, there's probably only a couple teams that he would actually be able to work, you know, work out. But, you know, Bo on fucking Chicago, you know, Bo on uh, fucking Washington, you know, Bo on the Patriots, uh, you know, sounds like a disaster. Throw to second is safe. I don't know. And Caleb, it seems like it's more going to be about endorsements, you know, and about social media rather than about, you know, winning and being a team player and sacrificing, you know, for the other teammates and whatnot. It just seems like kind of a pre Madonna, you know, type of uh, you know quarterback. That it's more about him than the team. And I, I wouldn't want to draft a player that's like that. And that might not be the full case. You know, I, you know I've heard some good stuff about him too, but based off film that I've watched, you know, lots of concerns. Wow, it was close. All right, let's go to the bottom of the ninth. 6-4 Red Sox. Are they challenging? Oh, we're good. Let's go. Ooh, he looks safe. He looks safe. Oh, and that angle he looked out. That's close. I guess it just depends when the baseball actually gets into the back of the mitt. Not the front of the mitt, but when you actually get contact and you can't see me from that angle that they're showing. Wow, that is close. That would definitely be worth a challenge if I was the Red Sox. Yeah, but again, you know, when you have your completion percentage that drops off dramatically when you play a good team, you know. Like, you know, to go from like 50 touchdowns and five picks against shitty teams and then like eight touchdowns and seven picks when you play good teams, that's a big drastic difference. Like you're like only a touchdown above and then you're like dominant against bad teams, but when you play good teams, you suck. That's that's alarming. That's not good. And it's not like the Bears got a good O line or a defense. It's like, yeah, you're you know, and they don't have a running game either. So it's like, yeah, you might be able to have some wide receivers to throw to, like Keenan Allen and TJ Moore and Cole Komet, but if the O line doesn't do a good job, how the hell is he gonna give him the ball? safe. I figured he was. That first angle that I saw, he looked like he was safe and he was. Damn it. 
Urias at third, dummy. Should have kept uh, Rojas there at third. So not only can he not hit, he can't fucking defend at third either. Come on, Scott Service. You don't pull a guy in the nine hole when he's one for two. If he's 0 for two or 0 for three, but uh, you know, the little subtle mistakes like that, you know, I get it. You want to be able to see what the guy can do. And uh, of course, what we saw is garbage. It's like Saucedo, not good. Yeah, but also, too, it's a little bit different when you're doing, like, the painted nails thing, but you're doing painted nails, lipstick, and all kinds of other stuff, you know? And again, it, I mean, like I said, it doesn't matter, you know, if you're straight or you're gay or you're bi or whatever, but obviously in a football locker room, you know, there, there hasn't been too many, uh, you know, gay guys that have come out, you know, until after they're done playing. You know, regardless if Caleb is just dressing like that to get attention, you know, or if he is uh, gay or if he's bi, but still, you know, the play is going to ultimately determine, you know, what we're going to see from him and his legacy. And I'm, not, I'm a little skeptical, you know, based off stats alone, not the fingernails and the lipstick. Runners on the corners, 1-1 one, one count, 6-4 Red Sox or two away. Story in the box. Wild pitch. Two for nine with runners in scoring position for the Red Sox so far. Big swing and a miss, 2-2 two, two count. Crazy, it's like Trevor Lawrence, Brock Purdy. You know, again, sometimes it depends on where you fall, but, you know, and, and you know, Dustin Fields has some potential, but, you know, I don't think you're gonna win a Super Bowl with him. You know, he's got potential to be like a, top 12 quarterback and right now he might be like 16 or 17 but i don't know if justin fields will ever be a top 10 quarterback in this league and he was the second best one in that draft the only one that's you know solid is trevor lawrence and even with trevor he struggled early on it shows you how important it is to be able to have the proper coach not urban meyer and getting dougie p in there but also getting the proper free agents at wide receiver o-line defense and building that squad the right way so it's like you can have all this hype all you want, but it shows you how hard it is to really be one of the top 32 quarterbacks in the NFL. And if you really want to be solid, you know, not every quarterback is going to be a top 12 quarterback in this league. Big swing and a miss. All right, let's go, Mariners. Let's go to the bottom of the ninth, baby. Last chance. All right, time for a hero to emerge. We're in the bottom of the ninth. We're down by two runs. Who's gonna be up to be the hero? Leading off for the Mariners, right fielder, two for three, two runs, two RBIs, two run Jack earlier in the game. Can you be the hero and do it again? Mitch Hanniga. Batting second, not Dominic Canzone. No, 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 you got replaced by who? Demo, one for one with a run with a two run blast. So both guys that ended up getting homers, here they are, hitting one, two in the lineup. Let's go, let's go. And then batting third, can you step up please for once in the eight hole, batting third this inning, hi France. So I can't get any better than this. You got a two run homer to get us to two. You got another two run homer to get us to four. Can you get a two run homer to get us to six? We'll find out, let's go. 
Last chance. Bottom of the ninth, six for Red Sox. Let's go. Come on, Hanniger. Go, Mitch. Pop foul, 0 2 count. Check swing. Did he go? No, he didn't. One, two count. Yeah, 30 teams, not 32 like the NFL. 15 in the American League, 15 in the National League. So five, 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 five. As far as the you know teams, instead of like NFL where it's four. Jansen. Two, two. Ooh, pitches inside towards his head. Three, two count. Ooh. Jansen's got some word twitches that he does on the mound. Walked him, baby. Let's go. Nice job, Mitch. Next up for the Mariners, Dylan Moore. Let's go, Demo. We haven't had too many walks. Take advantage. Big swing and a miss. Cutter, 92 miles an hour there on Demo. Like, sub, donate, comment, share. Let's not take it easy on that. Pitch on the corner, 0-2 count, behind in the count. Shout out to all the people watching on Twitter, Flash X, as well as the people in the room. got mods for a reason to be able to pick up the slack and I shouldn't have to be the one saying these certain things. One for one career versus Kenley Jansen. Bottom of the ninth, 6-4 Red Sox. One-two pitch. Big swing and a miss. Got him. We need to be much better about that, you know, being able to go over the likes, going over, you know, everything, the, the subs and, and the donos. Like I said, I feel that, you know, if people don't want to be a mod on the channel and they don't want to put in the work, you know, I can find people that want to do it, you know, and, or we'll have none and I, I'll just do everything on my own. 
you know, but we need to be much, much better. You know, I feel like, you know, everyone is so lax, you know, and like I said, this is my fucking livelihood and like, this is, you know, everything, you know, so I, I need to have people that are going to be on the same page with me. And if you're not on the same page, please let me know. Because like I said, I, I'll be able to find others or I, I'll do it myself. Bottom of the ninth, six, four Red Sox. Ty France popped up, two away. You guys are way too late. Rayleigh in the box. One looks like it potentially is is over, but you know, at least we didn't get a goose egg or a one. Just need to have a little bit more consistency from the team. Two forty nine average, nineteen homers, forty nine ribbies for Tampa Bay with an OPS of eight twenty four. Come on, Luke. Big swing and a miss, 0-2 count. Strike looking, strike swinging. Two cutters, this might be over here. And there it is. Punched him out. Final score, Boston Red Sox six. Seattle Mariners 4, Red Sox improved to 1-0, oh. Mariners 0-1, oh but we'll play tomorrow, and George Kirby will definitely play better, and a uh, great win, GG to Duda and the Red Sox, big win for you guys, disappointing loss for the Mariners and the Mariner fan base, but hell, we got 161 games after this to be able to improve and get a little bit better. Big facts. All right, I gotta go take Paisley for a long walk and eat some dinner. Shout out to all the people that donated, commented, shared, as well as watching on Twitter slash X, as well as here on YouTube. We'll be back tomorrow for the Mariners and the Red Sox matinee. No, 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 it's around the same time. It's gonna be around, uh, let's take a quick peek at the schedule. So tomorrow, the game will be exact time. Where are we at? Where are you? There we go, 6.40. So it'll be 6.40, about 20, 30 minutes earlier uh, tomorrow, Boston and Seattle. And I got one question for you. Who you know talks sports like us? Your boy Ryan, Northwest Sports Fanatics, and I'm out. Okay.